doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L podcast. Yeah. I'm scared right now. All right, cool. That's yeah. what you. That's, that's what it's called. I need the tension. I need yeah. the the pressure builds diamonds, man. This is a classic interview right here. This is like I real like, monumental. I feel like you know it's happening I mean? right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Al Nuke show. You have it. You had it. You had the Nuke show, right? That was like a real thing. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Nuke at night. We was number one. We was number one for five years. Five years. Five years. The kid, your show is. Nuke at night planted those seeds, planted those seeds for you to have these type of podcasts. Without you, Facts. there would be no me. Facts. Facts. And I just, you know, it's love and respect. At that you know time, I mean? too, uh, I think, uh, was Pirelli, you and Pirelli at the same time? Pirelli was on, um, on the move with Mr. Ma. Yeah. You know what I mean? They was on for a couple minutes. Mr. Ma was on just for a second, and um, but me and Pirelli. And shout out my man Tucson, keeping it 100, too. You yeah. know what I mean? He was on, too. You guys started like your own television stations, like facts. shows. Like yeah, facts. Um, I think I want to throw you that later, real quick. I'm waiting. Oh, you yeah. ready to go strand check? That's why I'm fucking with you. I'm I got fucking it. With there you. we go. I'm uh, fucking with you. Yeah, we created our own TV sh uh, network, um, TV Thirty Three. Um, shout out Video Vibes. Shout out um, Submarine Bell Isle. Shout out RJ. You know what I mean? Like we had them shows going. Nuke at Night was number one for five years though, for sure. I was um, the host. I was editing my own stuff. And um, I was putting it out every week, and I was going to customers and finding different um, customers that, like, you know, create different um, skits and stuff to kind of, like, incorporate their joint in my show. For sure. Yeah. That's very innovative, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's for sure. That time. That's for sure. Uh, you know, they brought you some clothes here, man. Appreciate uh, it. You don't have to wear it now, but appreciate if you just check it out. Is they from the deep? Yes. I got to rock with them. This is uh this is for you, Al. I like that. They, I like they, that. They Turn literally around. told me like this is literally for him. Like uh, I'm not giving you one unless you give it to Al. And I was like, okay. Hey y'all, I appreciate <laughs> y'all. Oh, man, kid. What up? I got real diehard people that rock with me, bro. Like real diehard people. Bro, and it's I... a blessing to be right here on this couch because I'm gonna say I didn't see a lot of people on your couch, and they'd be like. Everybody got something to say about B Detroit, you know what I mean? Right now, today, you got one of the unicorns on this motherfucker. You pick a year, and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened and how it really went down and anything that you want to know, you know what I mean? It ain't a lot of me left, for Talk, real. Let's, 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 well... Before you do that, I got a gift for you. You got a gift for me? Yep. So all this, you got stuff everywhere. Right. I said, yo, first, this is like, this is the Ski Master Omerta joint, but more importantly, okay. I got this for you. Let me see how you go with this. This is for me? What? That is for you, bro. Oh, my goodness. Hold now, on. listen. Let me, as I put this up. Yeah. This is fake, okay? Uh, what? Okay. But listen, Eminem gave me this. You were lying to me. Hand to hand, Eminem gave me this. Are you being serious? I'm 100% serious. Oh, crap, this bro. shit has been in my garage. I know you're a fan. Well, it's actually been with me for over 10 years. Oh, my God. And I didn't know what to do with it because it's fake. So it's like, I can't really wear it. M is a hip-hop historian. He's a hip-hop person. He gave this to me. He gave it to, like, five of us. Only, like, five of us at Proof wow. Funeral. Or it was like uh, um, the, the next year that he had passed away. Eminem pulled up real bossy and pulled out the donkey ropes and gave them the five people. I thought I was in paid in full of like of some real shit. But then I went home and I seen it wasn't really real and it was just like a moment. And that's cool, but I don't know how long I'm going to keep it. So I want to give it to you. And um, I want to say that I think we need to start a museum. You need to start a museum, and people come up here and give you real hip hop stuff. And this from me to you to start the actual museum directly from Eminem. Man, I'm, getting, I'm about to get teary eyed. Yeah, and it's all receipts. It was five people that got them. So shout out Trick Trick. Shout out like people like Marv One, Royce Five Nine. Know what happened? You know what I mean? That's all real. So that's Man. just from me to you, bro. Is it love? Bro. That's, is it love, bro? This is the most legendary moment. And if it, yeah, on, and if if it makes some money, if you get money, you it's half. I mean, you okay? No, this some facts. Camera. I can't believe it. You ever sell this. it? Cause you fuck around, get Eminem to sign it. He gonna remember it, I, some shit, and you no, know, yeah. So I can't believe this right now. Yeah, that's yours, bro. Um, I thank you so much for that, man. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate that. For sure. Um, you you know you're talking about proof for a second. You had a song with proof, man, right? Hard to hard to find anybody that has one that's still relevant in the game. Proof used to open up for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, when he was with Fire Ella, um, Proof was a good dude. That was my brother. He um, he got with D12, and um, he just blew up. He just went crazy. Got with M, of course, helped M start, and, you know, he he went there. But um, we did a lot of records. Me and, me and Proof had records on records. And then, you know what's beautiful about Proof? 
we had differences, you know what I mean, because I didn't see out of eye with M a lot, and me and Proof would have these silent conversations, and and he would really tell me the real, right? But then more importantly, he would be in like a crazy ass country, and he'd send me this postcards, like, "Yo, I'm here, bro," like, you know what I mean? This where I met my my nigga, and you gonna see this one day, and you know what I mean? Like, it's gonna be that. And he all he would always send them to me, right, right when I'm not even thinking about him. It's just be like, I'll be down, and it'd be like, damn, he go proof. Wow. Yeah. What do you what disagreements are you would, would you guys have about working with Eminem? Well, I think like with Eminem early on, you know what I mean. M was like, M was being M, you know what I mean. M was like, I'm just I'm glad I'm here just to kind of like tell you what's real going on in Detroit because you're talking again, you're talking to one of the unicorns, one of the one of the starters. So it was like for me, I want all the artists to always remember like you got a you got a responsibility to help Detroit. You got a responsibility to give back to the D. You got a responsibility to open the doors, you know what I mean, once you get to a certain pedestal or actually along the way. If you want Detroit to support you, you got to come back and, uh, you know what I mean, figure something out. And um, early on, it was always a conversation with me and all the other rappers was like, yo, is M going, when is this nigga going to come back? Like, what's up? Like, you know what I mean? And I remember asking him and him that personally, you know what I mean, when he when he came to a, um, like, yeah, first got on. And he, it was like a DJ panel or something. And everybody was there, all of the big wigs. And Eminem just got on. And he, like, kicked in the door. And, like, he was M now. And everybody was looking like, you can hear a pin drop. And he went off on the whole fucking place. Like, y'all motherfuckers didn't support me. Y'all didn't this. Y'all didn't that. And it was like he could cry. He was so serious about it. He was finally like, I'm on, I'm on, bitches. You know what I mean? And I didn't get y'all support. And everybody was quiet there. And, you know, I was on the panel at the time, so I was just went boom, 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 boom. Yo, all oh, that's cool, M, but is you still looking out for the deal? What we about to do? And when I did that, M went, like, yo. And that's when Proof was like, yo, Nuke. And then, so, you know, after that, it was always me and Proof just kind of having that conversation. Wow, man. Yeah. Um, this conversation's been brought up a lot, looking after the city. You know, um, when you get up, you come back and you help who's coming up. Um, it's highly debated, um, but you're sure. in, in your opinion, it is that you should come back and help. That's just your You're supposed point. to, or you're going to get barred. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, again, you're talking to one of the unicorns, and that was the that was the oath that we took. You know what I mean? Back then, that was the oath that we took. Hey, Detroit is like this. You ain't nobody. You start performing. You start going crazy. Detroit going to say, damn, we fuck with you. All right, cool. We rocking with you. Now, you get on. We ain't fucking with you no more for a minute because you up. But then when you pass that threshold, ah, we back fucking with you again, and now we need you to reciprocate. And that's just the whole strategy and structure of this whole Detroit shit, and that's how it started. That's how it should be. It's a very, very interesting perspective, uh, especially coming from you, man. Um, let's, sure. let's rewind people into, into your timeline. Um, 1996, right? <coughs> that's kind of your breakout era. That's kind of when you make yourself relevant to Detroit to some degree. For sure. Um, you know, you have lifestyle, the rich and the famous, um, yeah. and you're coming out strong with it. This is a time where I guess they would say Asham or Isham. Isham. Yeah, and then those cats, Detroit's Most Wanted, everybody like that are, prol are more prolific at mm -mm, that time. Mm -mm. Or they, were they earlier? Was Detroit Most it was Wanted? Earlier. Well, yeah, it was earlier. Yeah, a little bit. periods. <clears throat> First of all, what year you started hip hop? Well, what year do I think it started? Well, yeah, what year did you start saying Detroit hip hop? And who was the first Detroit artist you heard of? Eminem. Eminem, that was the first one. Yeah, but okay. I, I Eminem know that. was at 88.1 at one time saying, Al Nuke, how is you doing what you're doing? I don't know how you doing what you're doing, bro. Like, you, this is Eminem in the Source magazine. Wow. With his first, you know what I mean, situation. This is Al Nuke with, you know, a top record on the radio. This is what I'm doing. So that's here. But pause. I want you to talk about these right here. You see these? It's fire. You know what these is? Gators? No, see? As you got to be a part of hip-hop, I need you to go watch Crush Groove. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ever seen Crush Groove? No. It's very important. See what I'm saying? That's how they, that's how they call people like yourself culture vultures because mm -hmm. the, the, the beginning of hip-hop and just the basics of what to know and strategy is like we know Jordan as basketball players. Well, you got to know Crush Groove. That's mm -hmm. Run DMC. That's that's the, That was like the Bible first movie, rap movie, where everything was. Like, that's Eminem's Bible. You know what I mean? So you got to know that. But pause. These is the Gucci 1984 Varsity Gucci's. You can't find them nowhere. Right. Pull them up. You know what I mean? I had to wear these for you. You only pull these out every 10 years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you only pull them out every 10 years. You can't find them nowhere. Right. Nowhere. Um. So yeah, you're saying right. that even at that time 
when Eminem is shouting you out, you're already stamping yourself. They're wondering how you're doing it. Is Facts. it because of the breakout of the 19, 19, 1996 tape, or was it Yeah, I had a be- single. I had a single called Out the Door and then Party. I had like three, four singles mm. on a, on a, um, on a radio at a time where radio wasn't rocking with us, period. You got to think I came out in a time where you, you believe West Side, you couldn't even put out a West Side album. Like, you couldn't, an East Side person couldn't distribute his album on the West Side. You know what I mean? I pulled a pistol on the West Side distributor. You know what I mean? Like, real talk. It's all receipts. Everything I say today, you can go and research it. I never lie to you or never lie, period. I'm always 100. I had to pull a pistol out on the West Side distributor because he was like, yo, you mentioned the East Side and some East And this is way before, you know, the, the East Side, West Side beef. What year are we talking here? We talking 98. 97, 98, you pull it up. 99, all of that. You know what I mean? It wasn't Detroit Eastside artists couldn't put their albums out really on the West Side. And it, it was a little vice versa too, but it was mainly like a lot of East Side, West Side distributors. And like you're talking about Damon Records and a lot of record company, you know, a lot of them joints, they weren't really fucking with East Side artists. What like was that. the problem with sharing East Side and West Side music? Like what's, what's the segregation for? That's a good question. I think it was just, it's always been like that. East side niggas and west side niggas is different. Like right now you see a lot of unity and you see a lot of kumbaya and shit, but it's still that underlining, you know what I mean? Like nigga, we an east side nigga with a dirty white tee on. We gonna have 10,000 in our pocket. We don't give a fuck, nigga. It is what it is. It's up. Right. And you gonna have the west side niggas that's saying, nigga, I'm gonna always stay clean. I'm gonna always stay fresh. I'm gonna always have a bag. You know, it is what it is. Y'all niggas is y'all niggas too mean all the time. Nigga, get some pussy, get some money. So yeah. now, when you're moving on from this time, where you're dropping these tapes. You know, you got uh, obviously rock bottom. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You got street lords. These guys are popping off. This is underground still considered. Were you mainstream at that point? Like, were you considered mainstream as far as the reach of your music, or were you just dominating in the Detroit area? No, nah, all the artists back then, we all had Detroit. We all had the Midwest. We all had, like, we was just getting up to Lance and just getting up to Pontiac, just mm-hmm. getting up to Grand Rapids, just getting around to Toledo. It was so hard, my brother, like, so hard to just get that threshold to get the... Uh, to kind of get the DJs to play the music and to get the radios to play the music. You got to understand I came from that era where we had to threaten the DJs. You know what I mean? The Detroit, nigga, Trick Trick could go up there and tear everybody, tear the whole fucking DJ joint up because he didn't play hit, he didn't hear one DJ record. You know what I mean? We would all have our sit, you know, situations, you know what I mean, with certain DJs, certain promoters. It was a fight. It was a real fight. Did they just not believe in the sound? Is that what it was? Is that why the sound promotion wasn't happening for the underground of Detroit? It was the sound, and then we was too rugged. You know what I mean? We was just way too rugged with what we do, and then we didn't know business, too. You know what I mean? Just right. being being in the business now and being really in the music industry now for the past, um, you know, 14 years, now I'm inside and see how we was just kind of like, we got a record, bitch, play it, we going to beat your ass. That ain't the way to do it. Right, right. Professionalism, <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that wasn't. And then wasn't no social media, so it was just like we spent a lot of money in this shit, bro. So then it's highly debated, and if let's take mainstream off the table, because right now we're talking about Michigan and Detroit, right? Let's just knock Eminem and Rice and all of them off the off the table. When you're talking about the first Detroit artist to really break on that level, a lot of people talk about Tone Tone. Um, do you do, do you have uh, and uh, you know a perspective on who really broke the Detroit sound, Detroit Detroit sound at that time, during the early two thousands. Um, you mean for it to go national? You got to think, bro. We was an ecosystem within ourselves. You had people like myself, people like Tone Tone, K D Z. Everybody was making our own money here, so it was like we was already established, getting two thousand dollars a verse, thousand a verse. 1500 a show, 2000 a show. So it was like just really grew upon that. But right before that, it was a fight. It was a fight with the DJs, again, with the promoters. So it slowly had to happen. You know what I mean? People had to get beat up. People had to get stripped naked. It was a lot of shit had to get happened until we finally started getting music played. So when we started getting music played on the radio, um, you know, it was myself. It was DZ. It was Tone Tone. It was everybody coming. Boom. It was like a bump that was waiting to bust. It was just, you know, a lot of artists that was already right there in the threshold. But when it first started, like when it first started, okay, with Detroit picking back up as an artist, it was four artists. It was me, Trick Trick, Bombshell, Play School. There was nothing cracking in Detroit. Nothing. 
period. Eshan had his thing going, but he had his own market. You know, this nigga talking about, you know, the devil and shit. So he had the YCP and he had his own, my homie had his own move. Was Awesome Dre a part of that collectively? No. Or was that too early? No, that was too early. Okay. Like when them niggas came out, Awesome Dre, shout out to all them brothers, you know what I mean, Smiley, and all them people, but they, they stopped. And you had a, a pause in Detroit music for at least five years. Wow strong where it wasn't no music and radio like oh who is what like we we too invested in what's going on you know what i mean the program directors and music directors they was too busy into that my man mike um you know michael saunders and people like that they was like yo man we gotta get to the bag y'all tripping so it was to a point to where the pds was getting threatened you know what i mean wow. and the mds was getting threatened and djs having to pack up and run out of their fucking shows and shit and like you know that and then the streets start fucking with it so the people who could get the sound out were being extorted almost? Well, it wasn't necessarily being distorted. They was holding their nuts. You know what I mean? They was holding their nuts on niggas. It was like they wasn't they wasn't opening up the doors. Yeah. You gotta think when you when when we coming out the street from fresh from selling dope and then we press these albums up and then we take them to the distributor and then it's like, nigga, I just made seven thousand on the block, but I like rap. So I'm coming to bring you my C D for six dollars. Cause you squeezing me down to six. Cause you talking about you only gonna sell it for twelve to fifteen. You really making more than me off of it. Now wow. I gotta give you this consignment on six dollars, ten CDs, twenty CDs. You know what I mean? You know how mad that make a nigga mad? I gotta come and pick up. Man, me and you crying about sixty dollars, bro. One hundred and twenty dollars. I gotta keep coming over. That's why I pulled a pistol on my man. Cause it's like, bro, I'm coming over here, my nigga. You first of all, you ain't got my CD in the front. This, that, and the other nines. Nice. Man, fuck this shit. Strap out. I'm tired of playing. What's this place called again where you could go buy CDs and they were marketing it for you guys and everything like that? Man, that was everywhere. That was Damon's. That was that was Simpsons. That was um Chantonique's. That was like, man, it was a lot of them, man. It was it was a lot of them. Archer. I think Archer, Archer, one of them that was right there in um Highland Park, they would press up and they was the big they was our big distributor. They was the ones that'd take fifty CDs, hundred CDs. Is that technically like a gatekeeping perspective on their end to be like we're the ones who can get your music out there and sell it, but we're gonna tax you so that way like you cause you, you have no other option? Like we're gonna Right, we had no other option. So yeah. it was just like them niggas was like, yo, they was on some shit like they was grim giving you the sixty dollars or hundred and twenty dollars. It's like bro. So you came to the point where you're like I'm going to pull a fucking gun on you if you don't take my shit the way it's, the way it's supposed to be taken. It was to a point to where I was mad about the money situation, and then he was looking at me like he was trying to be tough, you know what I mean? Like telling me some, oh, nigga, this. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? You must think I really rap. I don't rap. I sell dope. I will fucking kill you, nigga. Oh yeah, it went like that, you know, because I am real from that way, kid. So they're scared. They were scared. Yeah, I, might, I didn't handle it the right way, but at that time Oof, I felt it but was it worked. right. You had to do what any means necessary to get the music played. Yeah, right? man, it was crazy at that time. Brody. And now they're seeing that the response was right. Like, that you guys were right about the sound being accepted. It just took a while. That's what's so crazy. Like, it feels so good to see that because, man, that's why I did Detroit Dreams because it was like mm -hmm. to see where Detroit at right now. Y'all motherfuckers don't know what was on our shoulders. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it looks so good right now to be an artist from Detroit. But, man, we came from a point where it wasn't cool to be a Detroit artist. I mean, in Detroit or outside Detroit. Motherfucker, like, Detroit? Nah. Detroit Dreams was about a year ago, right? Yeah, it was a year ago. And yeah. so, are you thinking about part two? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm on some other shit right now, so okay. we'll see. Like, walk I'm people, a, walk people you know. through that. Walk people through Detroit Dreams real quick. Well, Detroit Dreams was kind of like a rendition of Crush Groove. You know what I mean? It was, it was about a, a promoter in, in in the city that's trying to really pipe the city up and help all the artists. And in the midst of doing that, he ended up losing his life over some stupid shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just getting twisted involved in the streets because that's what happened in music now. See, nowadays, artists can actually... You can come up, put your music on YouTube, or you ain't got to spend no money. Back in the days, we had to go get a street nigga to say, bro, can you, you know, put into this shit? Nigga put 10000 in, 20000 in, he think he should. Nigga coming at you with Suge Knight, like, hey, man. And you like, well, bro, I ain't like, nigga, this is music. What the fuck? You know what I mean? So that was going on a lot. So that's kind of like what the movie was about, just a brother trying to really help the city blow and end up um, losing his life over something stupid. All right. Right. I mean, so it is kind of uh, not based on true story, but the true nature of what was. Yeah, true nature of just business. No, yeah. no true story or nothing like that. You know, you what know I mean? they say just... like Street Lord Juan was trying to 
bring people together like that, like really bring the entertainers and bring the scene together at one point and, and, and facilitate and whatnot. Um, and it just took forever for it to really transpire up until this point. You know what I'm saying? Do you agree with that? That Juan was one of the people that was trying to coordinate things and kind of play a quarterback? I'm Juan, my brother, you know what I mean? I talked to him the other day, you know what I mean? But I can't never, I ain't no never, I can't, I got to speak the truth. Juan was Juan. Juan was into Juan and who Juan was into. Mm. He would deal with certain people that he felt. Now, Juan would call here and there certain niggas and be like, hey, bro, I kind of like you. I rock with you. Come down to the studio. You know what I mean? But far as in just saying kumbaya Detroit, no, you couldn't even get close to Juan like that. See, this is why it's so interesting to talk to you, and I do feel like you're very transparent, um, very honest, and level-headed. If it's something that's bad about you, you'll say it. If it's something good, like, you'll say it the way it is, right? So That's for sure. That's why it's so hard to get a grasp of Detroit history, because everybody has a different side of what the fuck was happening. Because if I talk to one person about Juan, it's like, yeah, Juan was facilitating. Juan, Juan was the key. Well, you got a lot you talk of cap niggas, man. But it's hard to figure it out. That's why a lot of people... They're so critical of like what I do and how I facilitate. It's like, where's the book on Detroit history? There That's is why no. you got to start the museum. And people like myself right. got to be an investor. People like Juan. I can get Juan on the phone right now. He'll be ready. We could start a museum to where it's real Detroit talent and you can actually see the years of what people have been doing. It if needs you started, to happen. If you start this museum, what's the first piece you're inducting into the museum? That right there. This chain. Yeah, because okay. you, you're one of the owners of it. This so you got to do more than promote the culture you got to invest in the culture and you got to also have co-investments with other people inside the culture so that's why they won't call you a culture vulture the the problem with people like yourself is you might mean well and you mean good mm. but at the same time there's nothing that's coming back into the community when they could be a lot of people come on here and share lies and they won't click baits and they start shit and say all of those shit and just to promote themselves it's a balancing act so know? basically the show can't proceed unless you put out content that works. Right. And then at the same time, you do try to put out the shit that is great content. Yeah, you want to get your beneficial. clickbait. You want to get your memes. But you yeah. have to. You have to get the clickbait stuff in because if you don't, then there is no show. Essentially, but you're, the problem you, you is have with empty that, blocks. But the problem with that is you get a lot of fake. You know what I mean? You get a lot of fake. You don't. You know how many lame-ass niggas been on this couch? That's why I couldn't wait to get on this couch because, again, you got a unicorn sitting on this couch. Right. There's been a lot of lame-ass niggas on this couch. And when I say lame, I'm saying just creating shit. Right. I was the first. I was this. How was that? How was this? How was that? It's like, bro. Like, Look at the perspective of this, though, right? right. This, on, we bro. don't. We're not funded by anybody. We don't. We right. Don't, we don't make a lot. Of, we don't really make a lot of money or anything like Facts. that. Facts. Yeah, you ain't getting rich off this shit. Hell no. So uh, I agree. Uh, the I know the business. So when you're talking to somebody and they're abs giving you absolutely nothing, but then all of a sudden they do say something where it's like, well, the internet's gonna fucking eat that up. If you don't put those moments out there, then you have no content. And if you have no content, you become inconsistent. If you become inconsistent, you eventually fall off. And I especially agree. when the big dog rappers that I expected to come on and help, mm -hmm. that I supported come, when they were coming up, don't yeah. come on, yeah. I have no content. Facts. There's a lackluster of actually talented up rising stars in Detroit that are willing to come on here because Facts. of their own personal timing of when they want to come on. So I have nothing to work with. It's not yeah. like I can decide, like, let me call T Grizzly up. Let me call Big Sean. Let me call. I can't do that. But you got to understand, though, you're going to get there there those levels though i'm not worried you know about I mean? getting there i'm saying as far as people going like what you're putting on your show isn't right or why are you putting people in this it's like if we don't do that we don't have no content we have nothing I mean, to you grow got a with point. you got a point there's no it's a reality it's like but i think too though but uh, i think i think you ain't got a producer though it's, it's it's not a there's no mediator between you and the streets it's just whoever it's just instagram Fact. it's just microwave yeah i don't you know have anybody I mean? to it's just like... microwave you ain't got nobody that's really going to these clubs really going around these people and saying yo i work with kid like you know what i mean like what's up you know what i mean a mediator that's what eminem had with proof right proof was his 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 cushion you know what i mean and and that kept him a part of the fabric you know what i mean versus just this situation he was just part of the culture and you do you know? think that the connection between and i do agree with you on that i'm not skipping past that i do agree that you, you know you're saying i need a team and people to facilitate just one or two right yeah. on um do you think that the connection and the relationship between eminem d12 proof and everybody was organic or do you think it was a way of facilitating yourself through a scene when it's very black dominated and detroit dominated culture or as far as in detroit yeah um Knowing him, seeing where him come from, been knowing him for a long time. Not hanging out with him, but he know me, I know him. Um, I don't feel like Eminem a culture vulture. What I feel like is him could do a lot more. Mm. I feel like I often question what was the initial plan, you know what I mean, between you and Paul. Because 
when you first came out, it was Detroit this, Detroit that, Detroit this, Detroit that. When you really got the bag, you kind of like disappeared. We didn't kind of really see you. Right. You know what I mean? And um, I feel like once you got up to 10 M's, okay. You got up to 20 M's, okay, cool. You M, you ain't got to do nothing. You got up to 50 M's, uh, M. Hey, M, you had 200 M's, bro. A half a bill, bro. Go on and open up a motherfucking t uh, building downtown for young guys to come down in and do graphics, do shooting, do, um, you know, do music. Open up a multicultural uh, center in Detroit, bro, where you could just run through new talent. It won't cost you shit, and the sponsors will be right there. Why not do that? Right. And That's why I feel with, with, with that situation. Okay, I understand. So, yeah, it's a it's an interesting debate, right? Um, If you were in that power or in that position, you are saying you would... You bro, would... you're supposed to. There's no there's right. no in-between, bro. Yeah. My nigga up, man, half a billion dollars, bro. What the fuck you talking about? How could you not say he ain't? Okay, so... How, from... could, you not, how could you not say he don't supposed to? How? How? The only thing I could say is if you know that it's not going to help. That's what you mean? That... So you know what? That's a, that's, a, that's a white people shit. I ain't going to lie, kid, because listen, mm -hmm. let me, I'm going to say this, though. Okay. Years ago... Nigga asked him, hey, man, why you ain't got some niggas on tour, bro? Like, you know what I mean? Why you ain't putting niggas on tour that's from the D that's really popping? Mm -hmm. Why you don't hide that? You know what the nigga said? Because, man, somebody might have, be selling some dope. Somebody might have some, some bowls or some keys on the tour bus. That's going to fuck the whole brand up. So that fruition, that thought, when you put that thought in your mind, that automatically kills the opportunity. <sighs> that's interesting to say. We'd have to experience to know for sure because it's... It, 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 so let me ask you this. You okay. come up on... We fuck with you to the end, my nigga, and you end up coming up to being like motherfucking Vlad or one of them niggas. Fuck them niggas. You cut that out, whoever. But you end up making a real bag off this shit. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't feel like you should come back to the city and do something? If you up... To, if Even if you up, let's say, 20 M's, you just gonna have 20 M's just to scream Detroit and just say, I'm still living Detroit. You ain't gonna see me. The only perspective but, I do have on that, if I ever did blow up and became at that level, is that anybody who's seen what was happening and didn't come in to help contribute, that knew it was happening, and they wanted to contribute after or be a part of it after success, I wouldn't be able to help. I wouldn't want to work with those people. Because anybody you believe in... Break that down again. I'm saying to you, if you got $20 million, if, uh -huh. if we didn't help you make $20 million off this podcast shit, bro, do you feel like you owe Detroit? Period. Yeah, right, don't give yeah. me no political right, ass right, questions. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Answer it, shit. It, hell yeah. Right. So you come up with 20 M's, you know for a motherfucking fact, you better have some shit going on out here in the D if you want to still move around in this bitch. Right well, or not wrong? Not only that, because just out of genuine nature. Yeah, out of genuine. Like, okay, yeah, cool. The motherfuckers were there for me. Exactly. I'm going to help the motherfuckers right. that were there for me. But that's the conversation, the motherfuckers that saying. were there for me. How many motherfuckers weren't there is the question. Well, it depends on this, though. I'm going to say this, though. Detroit different. We are one big family during the making of coming up. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? During the making of coming up and trying to blow this bitch up, we were one family. Even not rocking with each other, not we all signed the contract. Hey, man, we all trying to get out this bitch. If you come up, you come up, you come up, you owe, you owe, you owe, you owe. Any fucking camera look at me, you owe. That was the original agreement with all of the fucking forefathers. Like, bro, come back and do something. Not you owe one motherfucker. Ain't nobody saying, ain't nobody trying to start you. Figure out a fucking way. To help more niggas get out this bitch. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it makes sense. 100%. Yeah, that's all, bro. That's all the niggas saying. Nigga don't owe nothing else. Now, when you look at people like Kid Rock, who was Kid Rock? What did he do? Do you was Kid Rock? Did he did, he, did Kid Rock help Detroit? Not that I heard of. Man, fuck Kid Rock. I won't say that on your camera, man. Fuck Kid Rock. Thanks for picking this podcast. It's, it's yeah, like, that's how I feel. I was just smoking a blunt the other day, watching some shit about Kid Rock, bro. The shit that Kid Rock did, I was around Kid Rock. Really? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Kid Rock don't reach back out to Chap Town. He don't reach out to the people that help him pop. You know, when I asked Kid Rock one time, I asked Kid Rock the same shit I asked Eminem, because we was moving in the city like that. Like, hey, bro, what you going to do for the city, though, my nigga? I know all this shit cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, what's up, bro? But um, what you going to do for the city, though? What's going on? You know what he told me? Oh, man, for real, man. I just... Whoever it is, bro, if I like them, I just give them some money to help their career. Some old political old white people shit, man. You ain't come up with no real plan. You gave me a quick ass get the fuck on move, but we ain't seen nothing else from Kia. I take you as a highly percept like perceptive person. Like you can look at somebody and determine. Yeah, who I they can are. read. Yeah, I can read you until I'm a director. I can read your body language. I can look at your soul. I can tell you your age, how many kids you got. So if you're able to do this, what do you think the perspective is on people not helping even though they have 
the status and success to be able to do so. What they do you did. Think? They weren't close enough to the fabric. What's that mean? They weren't close enough to the fabric to know what the fuck was going on. Eminem wasn't close enough to the fabric. Eminem was cool, but Proof brought Eminem around. A couple people brought Eminem around. You know what I mean? Eminem wasn't really in that motherfucker's soil. You know what I mean? He'd go to the open mic. Okay, cool. It's the open mic. The shit. And, and <clears throat> let me say this. I fuck with him. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to disrespect M shit on M. I'm telling you the truth. Right. These are fucking receipts. You know what I mean? Any nigga know Al Nuke ain't gonna never lie to you and I don't owe nobody no money. Ain't nobody never looked for me in their life and ain't can't nobody in Detroit look and say, that's a whole ass nigga. All they gonna say is that nigga helped me. And you gonna see in the comments. But what I'm simply saying is M wasn't really in that, in that, in that crust. You know what I mean? Of what was going on. All the niggas that was in that crust, no. Okay, we gotta do something. D12, them niggas knew, like, hey, man, well, I get some money, bro. I got to help. You know what I mean? I got I to gotta figure something out to help these niggas or I can't really move around in the city like that. I can't move around in the D if I make a motherfucking million dollars and I'm still looking at niggas and I'm pulling up in new bins and new whip strips of chips and ain't nobody eating. I'm smiling in niggas' faces. Man, nigga, those supposed to be kicked in, bro. Yeah. That's, how, that's how we was raised. When you started pushing your own networks, your own TV shows, yeah. and your own uh, ways of getting Detroit's music and entertainment scene out there, what was the agenda? What was the what was the blueprint in your mind? You know why I started Nuke at Night? Because um, I think Pirelli, Pirelli had a show, and I wanted to get my video on there, and he was charging something, and I just got mad. I was like, Brian paying that shit. I'm about to start my own <laughs> show, bro. What the How fuck? How much was the seven mile of Ballet charging at the time? Man, I think he was charging. He was kind of squeezing, bro. It was, it was enough to make me mad. It wasn't no motherfucking fifty dollars, hundred dollars. This shit was like three, four hundred dollars. I was like, P, and All you right. my man. I, I know you, and you know how hard I go in the city. So, but I ain't get mad. I just said, fuck it. I'm gonna start my own shit because I mind you, Video Vibes, who've been going for all this time. He been going for 20, 25 years straight, still right now. I help him get in the game. You see what I'm saying? So it was like. He got I helped him get in the game, and then per Pirelli and other guys got in the game, and then I watched the set back still being Al Newt. But then when I seen that show was really moving, and niggas was trying to charge me for video, I said, like, hold on, nigga, I'm about to start my own show. What, what's your perspective on that, too? Because that's still happening to this day where certain people have established enough in the culture, in the community, where you don't you can't charge everybody. Like, anytime, if the Doughboys or Street Lords, Rock Bottom, if any of the OGs or anybody that's done something of significant work, right. it's not even just not charging them out of the fact that you know you're going to benefit from it, but it's also like, this is a fucking person that put his foot into this shit and put a print. Right. You can't. That's like an OG. That's like, in my culture, I'm Chaldean. It's like a uncle. It's like, yo, man, you're a legendary, like, type shit. Like, we it's, um, honor. Honorary. It's, let me tell you, it's like, it's on a different type of basis. It's levels. You know what I mean? Again, I'm in the industry, so I see what's going on with a, a Future and a Gucci or these guys. It's like, it's basically, when you're talking like that, it's basically like we bartering. So, like, my nigga, you on a certain level and I'm on a certain level. So, we can barter and not really charge situation. Like, I'm a brand. Like, I know Al Newt on this show is going to get views. At the same time, I respect you. You've been putting me in this motherfucking work. So I could have went anywhere, but I made sure that I wanted to be here. I made my security and everybody hurry up speed here. He said he, to be on time, 9 o'clock, this, that. I respected all that, although I didn't like how it was handled. You know, because I felt like, well, this nigga treat me like a mediocre nigga. Don't be late because of this. I said, you know what? I'm going to respect this nigga. because flyer goes to everybody. In, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was a generic flyer. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to respect it. I respect it. You see what I'm saying? I ain't ego tripping. So that's what that got to be. It got to be a barter system. A lot of niggas got it fucked up feeling like just because you put in a little work, you feel like you on the same level as this nigga right here. So now you don't owe or you don't have to owe or this, that, and other. It don't work like that, bro. You got to know. You got to know what level you on. Don't don't never get too. So know. at that time, you felt like when Pirelli was trying to charge you to be on his platform, you had already built enough criteria and respect, and what you have accomplished to not facts. be charged. You should have been on their honorary, like facts. honorary. Uh, yeah, facts. I, I should have been on their honorary, and then, you know, that wasn't really my. That wasn't really the reason why I really started it wholeheartedly. That was one of the reasons. The main reason for me was to. I had an agenda. I had I had videos. It was movies I was talking about. It was music. And then more importantly, I wanted to I had a nonprofit organization. You talking to the first nigga that created a march and as we marched up seven mile, hundreds of people blocked the whole fucking seven mile down. So I had an agenda. You know, we, we shut down downtown Detroit. Two hundred brothers, fifteen labels. Did you know that? Man. Fifth can you imagine fifteen labels? 200 black men downtown wearing black t-shirts screaming DC 
we marched downtown, everybody high, everybody drunk. And you know what I said? Because I was the president. Before we started marching, I said, these niggas going to tear this motherfucker downtown up. No, they ain't. Let's pray. Everybody, a big-ass circle together. Let's pray. We literally prayed in Legends parking lot, made 200 brothers hold hands, hold hands, and put a big-ass prayer together. And when I tell you we walked downtown, nobody tore up nothing. Everybody just screamed, D.C., white people were scared. Motherfuckers, who the goddamn, this goddamn, they didn't know what the fuck was happening. Can you imagine 200 niggas screaming, walking up the street at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday night? Man. That was like, and no police bothers, nothing. You know what I mean? It was it was a memorable moment. This is helping you help coordinate this and make sure that everything goes the way it's supposed I was to the go. president of D.C., yeah. Detroit Connection. It was 15 East Side labels, a couple from the West Side that came together to create a unity agenda because, again, we was getting blackballed. It's interesting, too, when people talk about groundwork and effective groundwork and groundwork with substance, right? And Here usually, you go, my baby strategy check. What you want to do? Usually, Camera. You want what you want? Usually it only applies to the person's own self uh, growth, but what you're doing is something that impacts everybody in the community itself, right? I was always so, like that. So it's always real groundwork. Is what we're like Chanel, when Chanel came on here, she talked yeah. about real groundwork, about getting artists on summer jams. Like, this is real groundwork. This is actually breaking doors to make something happen, right? Facts. That's shit that really matters. Now, you're um, able to stay in front of the scenes, behind the scenes, create productions, be inside of productions and everything like that. You have the entertainment and the business side locked down pretty much, right? Facts. Um... As far as your entertainment endeavors are concerned, do you feel like you found most success with being in front of the camera or being behind in production? Mm. That's a good question. I think my success just really came from my determination, from my hunger. Mm. I was a fast. I was a man of all facets. You know what I mean? I'm doing any and everything you can think of. I'm a hustler. Even when it comes to my movies, I write. A lot of people don't know I write, direct, and edit my movies. Wow. You know what I mean? And and I'm serious with this shit. So I say my success just come from overall grinding. Like I manage Zaytoven, one of the biggest producers in the country. Yeah. I'm able to still do that. I got to still handle them phone calls while I'm writing a movie, while I'm sitting here editing. I may fuck around and do my own graphics that night. I'm, I'm a man that's been working 15 years on the computer, on the phones, or talking to people, or doing a project since 1999. They can't fuck with me. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm just, I'm just real. I'm just real. They can't fuck with me, and I'm gonna outwork any and everybody continuously until I die. I don't need no help because ain't none of them never really helped me. I ain't got the help. I only been helping niggas. And you feel, as far it's as entertainment's real. concerned, established in that category. As far as, are you fully funded by your own entertainment, or are you is your entrepreneurial aspect what's really funding you? I entre uh, yes, I entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur myself. Yeah. I've been an entrepreneur and my own boss for a long time. I don't. I don't. No, nah, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't work for no companies. You know what I mean. Don't nobody sponsor me. I don't have no CEO. You know what I mean. None of that. It's all Al Newt. What you see with me is what you see in hard work and grind. Sure. And multitasking, 15 hours a day, 16 hours a day. Walk us through the timeline after the, sh the Nuke show, um, how you're progressing from there. Because you did get involved in creating more productions after that. But just walk us through like your own timeline of creating productions and maneuvering through the entertainment scene. Um, when Nuke at Night, we did that for five years. We was like number one killing the game. Right after that show... Um, you went away at Park, right? For like a little while? Mm -hmm. You did Park, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I did 106 in Park, went on there and performed the whole city, watched it. I lost, um, dude, because I was too arrogant, and I screamed, Detroit what? Threw the fucking hat on the floor. That made everybody scared. Terrence J was scared. A couple niggas was scared. They knew I had won. The judges had said I had won. And then when they came back a commercial break, they let my man win because the judges was like, this nigga too arrogant. Like, he too, he too upset. Like, Detroit has an issue with... When we nervous or we feel like we need something, we real passionate about it. And people perceive that to be, you know, uh, intimidation or aggressive or this and that. We just, you know, we just real passionate. And I was real passionate on that show. I went, Detroit, what? And when I tell you, my nigga, the whole D was watching. The whole city, radio, both stations. Hey, I don't do this. Day. And to see me lost, I wanted to, like, punch a motherfucker at that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, yo, y'all gave it to me. Y'all told me during commercial break. I'm telling the I'm telling the nigga that one, bro, tighten up next time, my nigga, what you got to do is such and such. <laughs> <laughs> no, no cap, bro. I'm talking about that. And he telling, he like, yeah, bro, you right. Because he was weak. The nigga was lame as fuck. And, uh, 
Yeah. And but you know the crazy part about that, the two judges that um I guess that hated on me, they both got killed. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's one still living. True, True went to jail. True Life went to jail. Jesus. The other dude from Def Jam killed himself. Oh my God. And um, I think the other one died too. So yeah, there was, you know, yeah. You can't do Detroit Bowl because the whole city is watching that and we really won. I, I, I don't think you should tie those things together though, man. I know I'm cold-blooded, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> like but... Al Nuke not getting the prize and then them dying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared to you be on this think, couch. You got to think, kid. I sold hair around all my life, bro. I used to watch people OD, bro. Oh, yeah. I used to literally watch people OD off my dope, bro, and I felt good knowing that they nodded, bro. See, now I'm kind of getting nervous on this couch. I come from Do you mind that if era. I put this on? I, I come feel, from that can era, I put that bro. On? Is it I'm okay? telling, I'm I'm telling you the truth. You, ever, you ain't never had to thump a nigga, bro. Like, I'm talking about thump, not shoot, but thumping this thump doping into him to make sure he got the strong dope. Don't do that, man. Why you? Well, that's mine, bro. Hold on, bro. That's mine. Put your shit on, bro. What's wrong with you? Come on, bro. You on some Diddy what? shit. Yeah. You can pull it up. He was scared. Detroit. Man, and I really won, but I had lost, and then them niggas had died. Man, man. all right. So now Whatever. after that, what's uh? So you're getting all this love from Detroit after that. Obviously, you're already getting love, but now you're getting a maximized, a maximized uh, amount of love, right? You're standing up for the city. Uh, where do you progress from that point? When? What year? What year you want to know? I can give you some shit. Whatever year. Well, we're we're talking about 106, give me right? A year. We're talking about 106. 106. So what happens after that? Oh, what's up? I want to move that hoodie over. It's like uh, half. Okay. Day. God. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. You have two watches on? Mm -hmm. Oh. It's Cuban. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's Cuban. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't. Sorry, you're good. He has, uh, I thought he had two watches on. He has a, a what is that for? It's a big ass flat Cuban. That's what does that mean? That's like, uh, like six grand worth of gold at least, right? Couple, uh, couple. It, it is solid or hollow. Oh, my God. I've never touched anything like this in my life. That's light work. It's a magnet that does this? No, it's clips to make sure your oh. shit don't get lost when it's worth money. You okay. gotta make sure your clips on. Huh? Oh. But fuck those diamonds, man. I wear gold, bro. Like, you know what I mean? All gold stainless, you know, the all gold standard Rolex. Cause this type of shit, you can get your money back if something happens. Niggas buy most of nice fake diamonds. The world is fucked up. Look, um, one thing I noticed that was, I know we're kind of jumping timeline here to all current events, but one thing I did notice is you were very upset on social media recently. About what? I never thought I would ever see you be upset. What was it about? Um, I think something to do with stretch money. I don't know what the hell happened. Not to yeah. get too deep into no, it or cool. anything like that, but you were talking about people. In the, all, all, all I know is I walked into your live and you were like, at least I raised my kids. And I was like, all right, I'm out of here. Damn, I said that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's all I heard, and then I was like, I'm, I'm gone. Because I fuck with Stretch Money. Him, he came out with a tape with Valid. I, I fuck with the cat. I think he's a real hip-hop artist. Where Vlad come from, bro? Valid? Where he come from? You talking about Valid or Vlad? The guy you just said is, is part Valid. of Valid. Uh, Where he come from? I think he's from here in Detroit, I think. All right. I don't know. You don't like I ain't got, No, I don't know him. I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing against him. It's I ain't cool really cat. got nothing with Stretch. I just, like, mentioned... You know, the situation with me and Stretch, I talked about it earlier, was just like he was like my little bro when he first came out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The big, you know, the big monster, the big street, you know, the the lords and the big dog, Stretch. I ain't really never know that person. I knew my little bro, you know what I mean? Like, yo, Stretch, I, you know, Stretch, humble, smiling, Stretch. The Stretch you see now that's so grim and so serious, you know, with that, I don't like that, but that's him. But as far as with me and him, it was just a situation where it's in, you know, I wanted to put a project together with him and um, Mike Mike. I wanted to executive produce a project for them years ago, and I ended up giving them a Zaytoven beat to record on. And I've never in my life gave nobody a, Detroit, uh, a Zaytoven beat ever, and I deal with a lot, a lot of talent. And um, I never get, did that, but I wanted to see them brothers do it. So I, I snuck them a beat, you know what I mean, and say, yo, do that kill on that you know what i mean long story short a couple months later stretch being in his you know rants and shit he was ranting and i said bro what's wrong with you i just commented bro what happened what's wrong today nigga just said yo you tried to get ten thousand from me for a zaytoven beat you ain't shit neither what the fuck are you talking about you trying to fuck my bag up bro like what if zay seen that comment and he think i'm really trying to sell detroit niggas beats for ten thousand on the side what the fuck is wrong with you man this shit on Murta, bro. You can fuck something really up, fam. The fuck is wrong with you? On some real, real shit. I was hurt about that. Especially on this pretense of, bro, I never mentioned a dollar. I'm too real. Like, where the fuck? 
Who you gonna sell a beat to a Detroit nigga for ten thousand dollars? Bro, you really gonna get in the shootout? You even tell a nigga, hey man, I need ten thousand dollars for a beat. Maybe right. Who you gonna tell a nigga maybe that Maybe right when first day out came out and T Grizzly was hot, it would have been maybe one percent possible. It would have been possible, maybe at man, that moment. Listen, man, hell of a is my brother. He don't think and he could... hell of a been around a hundred years like I have. <laughs> he ain't telling no nigga in the D, give me ten thousand dollars. He not. You don't think when first day out dropped there was man, a chance? Listen, man. A chance from just... right now. And hell of a deserve twenty thousand dollars. Facts. But hell of a smart like me and no, he had never in his motherfucking life tell another nigga, yeah, shit, give me ten thousand, bro. Man, come on, bro. So it's just the point of you saying that. You question my character. This shit is on Murta. I stand on my square. This shit is real. Hundred years, my nigga. And really, what bothered me is he said, "You remember, nigga, me and you were smoking a nickel. The nigga smoking nickels together, nigga." Like nickel bags of wheat, like nigga, what? What? So you just like what? he's just making up shit, basically, is what you're saying? Like him saying you tried to sell him a Zaytoven beat for ten thousand dollars, which makes you look terrible because Zaytoven might go like, "Wow, you're taking my beats and trying Bro, to sell them." Bro, what I'm even more hurt about is a nigga telling me you smoking nickel bags with me. Right. Man, I'm a motherfucker, triple OG, my nigga. I've been smoking out the jar for. I don't know, 25 years? When the fuck you been smoking a nickel with me? I'm not... What? That hurt me more than anything. So it was like, you got me fucking... Something happened to your brain. Because when you first met me, my nigga, I had a studio on... in on uh, Houston Whittier. Cold-ass studio. All all world. Shit was painted everywhere. Shit was beautiful. Am I capping? Uh, you tell the truth. Bro, there's no receipt. This receipts... Anybody could tell you that. I had studios on the west side. I wanted the first east side niggas that had a studio right there on South Mile, bro. On the west side. I'm standing out there, east side nigga. Every west side nigga riding past, like. And I'm standing out there. I ain't I don't want no trouble or nothing, but I'm I'm pushing my I'm pushing I'm pushing, nigga. You know what I mean? And that's nigga, that's when Blade and them coming down. That's how me and Blade, Blade, me and Blade had a real Relationship, we did records because he respected my grind. I'm pulling up, east side nigga pulling up Range Rovers and shit, right there on South Mile in fucking Wyoming, wherever that was. You know what I mean? Had one on Joy Road with my other nigga. I'm an east side nigga. Right. But long story short, that's how I met Stretch. You, bro, you coming to my studio with Crane, Crane the OG. That's who I was eye level with. You was an artist under Crane. You, all right, Stretch, I fuck with you. You're cool. Crane, like, I fuck with you. So maybe in the midst of the rant, he said some shit, and then, you know, it's inaccurate, plus it can hurt your business and your reputation by saying certain things because he does have a certain amount of power where things can get clipped and posted on media websites and all right. those things. Yeah, things get misconstrued quick. And you guys are friends, so it's like a damaging thing. I wouldn't like that. If I was just wondering why he did that, especially yeah. when, he tried to help, when I tried to help him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when artists' careers aren't working the way that they want them, it's like something something can always transpire from that. Like it's not going the way I want it to go, Man. so I can say or do something and to make it work. I'll do that. I'll do that's like it fucking takes. You probably got an artist you've been putting on this bitch that you know ain't been doing a motherfucking thing, but you pushing the shit out this nigga, mm. and then he come one day and tell you, "Kids, you try to charge me, man. Why did you just get on the couch, man?" Uh! No, it is kind of weird. I you do like, have friends. bro, what the fuck I is you talking friends, about? I have what? friends I help out all the time, and then if you don't help them one time out of nowhere, yeah. It's Bro. like, oh, man, what the fuck? I thought we were straight. I'm like, man, I never ask you for shit. All you do is ask me for something. Then I can't, yeah. do, I can't do this one. I can't do it for man, you. Man, I got an own cousin like that, bro, I love. And I, I ain't talking to my cousin no more because it's Stretch. You know what I mean? And Damn. it's a cousin that's been around me. Everybody know me know I fuck with a certain cousin. I ain't even going to say his name because I ain't even about to give him that much, you know, pull. But this man was on Stretch page when Stretch was talking like, oh, don't nobody fuck with Noob. This, that, and the other. Listen, he's screaming and hollering. My own cousin, I've been taking care of that laid on my couch. I didn't birth to get food. This nigga on the, the nigga on page talking about, speak, stretch, speak, king. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm. Like, nigga, you and stretch ain't never did nothing more than smoke a blunt together in the club. I done took care of you for 100 years, bum ass nigga. You, you got clothes on my closet. You done slept with, around my kids and ate with my kids. You ain't never gave me nothing. Nothing. And this is the thanks I get. So, again, I'm here, bro, to really speak my flowers, man. I'm a unicorn. I've been doing this shit for a long time. A lot of people ain't been, you know, 
a lot of a lot a lot of people I feel like are try to sweep what I did under the rug for this whole culture of the D because I'm not here every day, but I bleed this shit and I'm still pushing the line behind the scenes. Uh yeah, I mean you've done a lot, man. Um, productions, music, yeah. movies. Movies are huge right now. Tube is breaking out. Um, you know you're 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 putting your foot in every door, but you you don't live here anymore, right? Like you've been gone for a minute. Yeah. What's I've been gone for like 13 years. I got property. I buy property here all the time, and I'm here all the time. But I don't. I can't live here every day, man. I don't want to down sell my bro. I want. It's a big fucking world, my nigga. I'm trying to go to fucking Belize, nigga. Like Japan, nigga. I'm trying to get my dick sucked in motherfucking in the ocean, nigga. In the bay, nigga. Like, like my nigga. Like I'm like I gotta like. Come on, man. Like shit, bro. It's a big ass fucking world. You know how many real niggas I seen died on six mile and seven mile. Talking about keeping it real. Fuck no. Oh, I didn't. I didn't been through shootouts, indictments, bitches. I didn't got money, lost money, took a loss, attempt murder. Came up with the money, lost the money. Been a rapper, nonprofit organization. Did movies, did a TV show, put out seven albums. What the fuck more you want me to do? I didn't help Kwame get in office. I didn't help Jennifer Graham Holmes push her. Help push John Conyers. Help push when motherfucking. The vice president Al Gore was in office. I, my, I'm pushing, pushing with this nigga Al Gore in Detroit. What more you want me to do? What the hell did you do with Al Gore, man? I'm on his plane trying to help this nigga get the votes and win. Democrats don't want to spend no money. I've been with that politics shit for a long time. They come and get niggas like us to help them push they push they line, but at the same time, the Republicans got the money. Yeah. Republicans gonna give you some money. You promote the Republicans. Democrats ain't giving you shit. They just like, oh. How they know your influence? How they know you were gonna be able to get your voice heard to the, the mass it's majority? It's all politics. It's all nigga. Mm. Illuminati is real. Man. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I'm using the rest of my right back. Right now, I'm still relevant. I was just telling somebody in my last interview. You know what makes me a unicorn? Cause you talking to a person literally that can talk to baby money. Uh, two weeks ago. And could get Esham on the phone and talk to him all in the same week. All in the same week. I'm talking about this all in the same week now. I'm, talk about that. I'm one of the very few people that could do that. Let's talk about that, who man. Else, who We're talking else can about, do you know, getting a, a legend of uh, Esham on the phone, man, and at the same time being able to speak to baby money. And trust me, guys, I've tried to get in contact with Esham. It's impossible. I don't know why, but it literally... I've talked to his man... Whoever, it's easy for me. I talk to him yeah. all the time. I, you talk and do it. I say again, I'm a fucking mm -hmm. unicorn. How many of you niggas you know for right now that they sat on this couch that can get a person like, let's just say Vezo, let's say Peasy, mm -hmm. let's say whoever you want to say that's moving right mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? I can get them on the phone or I just talk to them within 30-day period. And then you can go and pull up a nigga like a... From them to Big Hurt or go pull up an Eshaan. You know what I mean? I get to talk to them. Like, yeah, still, I'm on the phone with them. I seen you at, like, a battle with, like, to them. Gucci Mane, right? Like, in the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there at the fucking Jeezy and Gucci real thing. I was sitting... I'm with Gucci. at yeah. that, at, Right there with Gucci. How, how do you, like... So you just know them, and they're just like, yo, pull up on us? Like, type shit? No, nah, my brother Zaytoven. Man, Zaytoven, that's what I'm saying. Like, you really gotta... Like, I wish you knew the shit that would really be going on, bro. It's like, Zaytoven is... is Zaytoven is, like... Dr. Dre of the South, first of all, you know what I mean? And Gucci is like, they like a one and two. So when Gucci did Jeezy, it was only right that Zaytoven be right there because that's where Gucci get his kryptonite from, a person like Zaytoven, then a person like uh, uh, a person like Holiday. So it was only people like QCP, Holiday, Zaytoven. I'm right there in the back and Gucci. That's it. You got probably got one or two people, you know what I mean, around. But this is this who's standing right there. You Great. know what I mean. So me seeing that and witnessing that, that was that was that was a real moment in hip hop. And I got many moments rememberable, all the way from when Street Lords and Cheddar Boys got into it for the first night. I was standing right there. You know what I mean. I got mem many memorable moments. But again, like that was one for the books, like because you could the whole fucking Magic City was rumbling. That bitch was rumbling. Like, right. you, the tension was so, like, And weird. Zaytoven's kind of like the access point of you getting these, uh, you know, this artist that you... I manage Zaytoven. You manage him, but I'm saying, I like, he's the Zaytoven, access point of, like... that's my brother, so, yeah. yeah, I'm around everything that he do. Like, Very cool. You know what I mean? All the shit. We was just at Future. Um, we just had Future, what's the name? Future uh, birthday party last week wow. in Vegas. This nigga Future bought out the whole Palms. 
the whole when you walk in Palms Hotel, you get a card and it says future, welcome to future. You know what I mean? And I'm it is dinner. You can go and pull that up. You know what I mean? That just show you how I'm moving and how God work in my favor. You know what I mean? A, a brother like Zaytoven just welcomed me in and say, nigga, I know what you know how to do. Come on, nigga. Like let me show you. You know what I mean? Wow, like, let me yeah, the same people I used to call all the time for deals or trying to do this and that, they call me now. They've been calling me or I can call them on the phone. I can get Kevin Lyle on the phone. I can get whoever whoever you say moving, whoever you say that nigga is, I could get them on the phone or one person, a phone call away from getting them on the phone. What was the first time you heard Zaytoven or heard about him? Baby Ray. Shout out my brother Baby Ray. This shit is all on Murta, bro. This shit is all this shit is all a hundred years. Baby Ray helped Zaytoven with Gucci Man. Help Baby Ray helped Zaytoven get a studio. Like just Zay was doing his thing already, but he had a relationship with Zay. Zay is sending money. You know what I mean? Like sometimes when his money might get lower, helping with a new studio session or this, that, and the other. So it was only right me working with Baby Ray. He said, go check on the investment in Atlanta. Go see this nigga Zaytoven. He fuck with Gucci and all this shit, and we're going to work with an artist. And me going down there and seeing that play, and I'm like, damn, I'm seeing this. And I'm like, damn, these niggas are mansions and shit, like big houses and shit, but they just right there, they like just got on. And I'm like, damn, this shit open. And right when I did that, I went back to Detroit, and I'm arguing with a nigga for $200 about Nuke at Night. You know, this advertising shit, go nigga promise you some shit. And then for you didn't put his ad on the thing, and now you chasing him for the two hundred. Now he ready to argue about the two hundred. Man, I got so upset. I said, God, send me out of this motherfucker before I catch a case, another case. And it just happened for me to be able to move to Atlanta at that time. Wow. And I never looked back. And so you start talking to him about <coughs> ma managing and everything like that. And managing a producer is not the same as managing an artist. I'm assuming. True. Um, to walk us through the process of just uh, elevating him and getting him where he needs to be. Well, when I met Zaytoven, he already was moving. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He had um, Make the Trap Say A, Bricks. You know what I mean? He had a couple records already. And um, he was in the process of, um, I think he was, work, he was about to work with Usher or something like that. He was like, so he was moving. The thing about Zaytoven was his music was there, but he didn't know his face. And then I came around and just actually really humbled myself when I went to Atlanta and said, I ain't Al Nuke, Detroit Al Nuke. I ain't this guy with records out, movies out. Uh, uh, uh. I'm just a fly on the wall. I'm ready to work. I knew how to cut, edit, shoot, run, whatever, internet, whatever, this, that, and the other. And he seen that. He seen that in me. So I shot a video for him. He said, shoot another one, shoot another one, shoot another one, shoot another one. He was a friend, shoot another I'm shooting videos. And then it's like people calling now. Yo, AZ, I think we should do this, this, that. And before you know it, he really didn't have a lot of people, smart people around. Because you notice in this business, you're going to have a bunch of soldiers. You're going to have a person always going to say, hey, man, what what you need done? You know, oh, shit, what you just tell me what to do? You know what I mean? And they want to get paid maximum for that, for you finding them a job. Right. The key to success is finding a nigga like you and coming and see what you missing, what you lacking. Yeah. Then I'm gonna come around and help make you stronger. And then you're gonna look at me and say, damn, now you're an asset. Nigga, I can't even move without you. Cause you didn't put in so much work. You ain't even asked for nothing. You just put in stupid work. You just ready to go to war with me. And you're gonna have to look up at one nigga one day and just be like, hey bro, let's go. And that's what I did with him. Stayed 100, stayed down and just put in my work. Worked as an intern first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And in two years, I did Birds of a Feather. Birds of a Feather was one of the biggest movies in the South. You know what I mean? Right now to this day. Yeah. Like, Birds of a Feather with me and him and Gucci Man and um, Big Bang Black and all of the guys that you see that's moving in Atlanta. You know what I mean? I move in Detroit same way in Atlanta, knowing the same people. The only thing is the levels is bigger. I know Future. Future can look at me and say, what's up, Al Newt? Gucci, you know, what's up, Al? Me and Gucci done smoked, argued together, all shot dice together. Gucci done took my money, all type of shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, yeah, uh, you know, and not only them, me and Migos, shout out, you know, all of that. Them guys, I seen all them guys come up. Can you imagine that being in all of them eras too? So, like, yeah, unicorn that's shit, bro. It's kind of crazy that Migos, the shooting, <sighs> shooting dice on both of those angles, because, like, shooting dice with rapper friends, of course, like, we've seen, like, the, the obviously at critical sad endings that those can happen but when you're losing money to gucci man right you're playing you're shooting dice with gucci man 
Yep. What is the you know does the street side come out because that's a street game that's dude, dice is yeah. a street game yeah and like but you're 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 fucking high level success how yeah. do you like build the line between the guy like, right, where this is street shit but we gotta like balance out the fact that we're just being one hundred and transparent bro with you mm. I never cap you know what I mean I played shot Gucci I know Gucci and we've been did a lot of shit like mm. you know just not no crazy street shit because I've been knowing him like that but I'm saying we've been around a lot of times and fuck with each other but I'm not gonna say and say I didn't gamble with Gucci when thousands of dollars no nigga I went to, when I first got to Atlanta I tried to play the Atlanta game and start shooting dice. And as soon as I put my 500 down, him and Frank uh, Frank White, or one of the guys from the Falcons, like he gambled, big guy from out there, they shooting 10,000, 5,000. And Gucci just looked up at me one time, like, Nuke, you show? I said, yeah, 10 4, bet 500. Okay. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Took that shit in two rows, and I was like, bro, I was fucked up because that was, I was, I was, I was like 500 I needed. <laughs> like, wow. It, it wasn't my last five, but you know, if a nigga had three Gs and they got a town, three G, nigga took five. <laughs> Bills coming up, you know what I mean? So <laughs> he fucked me up, bro. You know what I mean? And it was a quick move, and he looked at me. And Zay, of course, looked at me like, what is you doing? You supposed to be here with me, bro, with the beats. Why is you out here? <laughs> <laughs> the D. I'm a D, D. You're shooting dice when you're supposed ah, to be able to make beats. Nigga got me out that bitch fast. But that's Gucci. You know what I mean? Gucci then. Gucci being Gucci. Being Gucci, man. Mm. Gucci's a different type of dude. We didn't have multiple situations. Um, When you said the, the Cheddar Boy situation and you're watching it transpire, you know, yeah. beef, uh, beef's emerging. Are you saying, like, you're literally in front of it as it's happening? Bro, that's, you You with a unicorn, bro. Mm. Anthenium, bro. I'm right there standing next to Wipeout, pulling a knife on Reg, okay. right there telling him, hey, bro, it's fuck this shit. I don't give a fuck no more. It's whatever. I'm trying to grab motherfucking Wipeout, and it's another bar here, nigga, I believe. Oh, crazy ass. Oh, if you knew a nigga like, oh, you already knew what I'm talking about. Oh, Murta shit. And they was there, and they told, they threatened Reg right there in the An Anthenium Hotel, and that's when, because it was tension already, but at that situation right there, when Wipeout just got mad, and he was serious, Al Nuke was right there. Man, yeah. what'd you do? Did you calm down the situation? I couldn't. I tried, but mm -hmm. I, at that point, that shit was way over my, you know, situation at that time, because I'm a rapper that's doing my thing. I got my own motion, my own move going. Y'all got some whole other street shit going on. Y'all done probably didn't did business together. I don't know what the fuck going on. So outside of me knowing Wipe and Wipe having respect for me and me having respect for Wipe, I'm saying Wipe, calm down, this, that, and other. But when the nigga still turned up, what you going to do? What you what you about to do? You got to let let, it, let the shit be the shit. And that's when be. the flame kind of starts for that That's whole... when the flame started, bro. That was and, that was the and, shit. And yeah. Like at your time, like, right, you're, 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 you got hit singles coming out. You're worried about your own brand, your own artistry and everything like that. It's hard for you to get super involved with the street stuff at that point, right? Because it can it can tarnish you or it can hold you back. Okay? I wasn't that. It, no, I wasn't mm -hmm. that. And I, wasn't, I ain't had no new single, I don't think, coming out or nothing like that at that time. It was just the fact that you got to think in those times... Detroit was serious, so it was always some shit that was going on. Just I just happened to be at that particular situation. Right. I didn't been right there where I didn't seen Trick knock the shit out of a couple of niggas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I could jump in. I could have jumped in. Yeah, let's beat the shit out this nigga. But nigga, Goon Squad, Trick, fifteen niggas. These are niggas all serious and grown, bro. What the fuck? I'm jumping in it for, and I'm a rapper performing over here too. You know what I mean? What am I? What am I? What am I doing that for? All right. And that was that was so. But not only that, but it's always issues, situations, and situations. So you got to know to, you know, mind your fucking business. Because I got situations too. Yeah. Niggas want to jump in my shit. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you have uh, so much history. Yeah, man. It's like. Yeah, bro. Like, um, well, you know, give me a year. It's hard to give. Like, Just give me a year. I'm going to tell you some you crazy me, shit. shit. I'm going to tell you some crazy shit. Mm, let's go 2001. 2001. Give me a second. Bro, 2001, I'm going to be real and transparent with you, bro. I was on the top of the motherfucking business um, going crazy with the music on top of the industry in Detroit, songs on the radio, everything. And I decided I went to Def Jam, asked Kevin Lau, what could I do to go to the next level? I showed him Family Fun Day promotions because I mind you, Al Nuke was one of the forefront 
artist that will perform for Family Fun Day, take his shirt off. All my ladies scream, mm. ladies scream. I pull my, I pull my, my, my black and whites out. I'm signing them right there at Family Fun Day. Then nobody had that type of shit going on, bro. You can go and pull it up. You can ask Coco. You can ask the people at the radio. This is what I brought to the table when it was just those four people. Trick, trick. Bombshell, Al Nuke, Play School. Then everybody started, you know what I mean, coming out and just doing it. But I mind you, two, at that point, 2001, I'm on top of the game. And I went and did a gospel play call. I should have listened. And I signed on to do that. And I then I went to Kevin Lyles and asked him what I need to do to go to the next level. Hmm. Showed him the footage. And he said, Nuke, you got to get out of Detroit. Wow. Detroit is a small circle. Show me how you can infiltrate the world. You know what I mean? And my stupid ass went to smoke some weed and seen Jerry Springer and said, yo, I'm going to go on Jerry Springer and um, I'm going to take both of my baby mamas on there and let them argue and then I'm going to talk about my album. You know what I mean? And I was my I was a marketing genius, but that was the worst thing that I could have ever did for my fucking career. Wow. <laughs> so, you, so you go on the show yeah, yeah. and you try to promote mm -hmm. your album. Yeah, with your man. two baby mamas, yeah. And why was it a? Why did it reverse? Why did it was in a, in a reverse? Cause card? the, cause the, my first baby mama, she was thugged the fuck out, pure West Side chick, R.I.P. Chris. She was gangster as fuck, and me and her was into it. So I ended up meeting a new girl at a whole nother spot. I don't even want to talk about, but got her pregnant quickly, and she said I'm pregnant. So while she telling me I'm pregnant in a matter of two months, three months knowing her, four months knowing her, my other baby mama was beefing, but I'm back with her a little bit, still fucking her. It's like, I need to promote this album. Kevin Lyle told me I needed to figure out a way to promote this album. I'm smoking weed one day watching Jerry Spring. I'm like, damn, let's put him on here. I'm going. So I went on there. I had my T-shirt, the album. It was just a fucked up time for me. This was, yeah, this was like 2000. Backfired. Yeah, Promotion-wise as well? Promotion-wise? Just didn't what? work out? Man, listen, that I got sucks. drunk and smoked some stress weed right before the show aired, and then I came out there, and then the baby mamas was really new to plan to promote. But the first baby mama, God rest her soul, I love her, she gangster as fuck. She knew how to cry. She flipped it on my ass. Damn. <laughs> yeah, she said, oh, okay, you want me to go here and promote that? No, I'm going to really play victim on your stupid ass. She played victim. The other baby mama, they acted like they was trying to fight. I'm on this bitch talking about my world, my album. Man, the crowd like, man, what the fuck wrong with this <laughs> nigga, bro? So you were the first person to try to, try to promote a rap album? I was the first album? nigga to do, try to promote my album on Jerry Springer. I ain't afraid to say it because you could go and scratch it. We white, we white. I paid for that shit to get it. all of that shit white. Watch, you ain't going to find the shit. Oh, you, you got rid of it? Man, you're not about to find that. Um, but I got a team. You got to tell you, that's cool. <laughs> would you want it to be back that's out cool. in the public? No, why would you want that to be that's out? That's hilarious. That's the funniest shit ever. It heard. is. At this point, I don't give a fuck. I got money. I ain't broke. I don't need no help. Fuck y'all. So it could go out. It's funny, but long as you know the backstory of I was trying to promote my album. You know what I mean? And it backfired on me. And you know what's crazy, kid? That's when I realized that the same people pipe you up that love you is the same people that's going to take, take your brand away from you. And you got to be mindful of that. The same people, the allies and the people that you create, these relationships, they're not all real relationships. Fuck no. They not. Fuck Even the no. ones that you feel is genuine, they not really. Fuck no. Because being who I am and it, many people as I helped, I, it's certain people, man, that I'll be wanting to just say some shit about because I can't even get you on the phone right now. And I remember you was like an intern, like, you know what I mean? Or you would always come around and be, Al, how could I do? You, people would stroke your ego to get your energy and get your game. Mm -hmm. And then once they get to a certain level, all they want to do is stroke your ego, but they don't want to give you an opportunity because they're intimidated because they know what you've done. And they also going to tell you, you had your time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I remember Malik telling me around that same time, you talking about 2001, I never told this story. It was like, when they was on a run, Eastside Cheddar Boys, I had already had a run going. Malik looked at me. He was drunk in a club. I came to support them on that night. The nigga looked at me and said, I think the nigga said, nigga, I remember at one point, nigga, I wanted to be like you, nigga, <laughs> and walked away. And I, I, I mind you, I ain't fell off. It's like, my nigga, I ain't fell off. My shoes ain't curled. What make you say that to me? You know what I mean? But And he probably ain't mean nothing by it, but... He was just feeling himself, you know what I mean, at that time. And it's 20 years ago. What the fuck?
It's 20 years ago, my nigga. That's a weird statement to make. Man, my shoes ain't curled, bro. 1984 Gucci shit you can't find. I've worked with Malik a few times. So, he he is a very straight, like, whatever's on his mind is what the hell he's going to say. Very intellectual people that are just a little misorganized. It's always interesting to meet those people, right? You know how to rap, man. It's cool. You're good. You know how to rap. But they're sharp. Man, they're a cool dude. They don't deal with cool. bullshit. Good? Yeah, you guys are good people. Oh, yeah, I did not. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um... Yeah. That's interesting as fuck, man. Um, you know, we're looking at the state of Detroit hip hop right now. We're looking at what's relevant. Movie scene. Uh, the movie scene is flourishing. The music scene's flourishing. I personally think there's a lot of illusionality to it, but it is. You know, it's hard to talk about that because you don't want to hurt the reputation of what's happening. But what's your perspective on it? Do you really think like things are going as great as it seems, or do you think it is kind of smokes and mirrors and mirage? <coughs> ah, it's our time. It's our time for up. I'm looking at the numbers. I'm 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 global. You know what I mean? I'm everywhere. Everywhere I'm at, you know what I mean? The first thing they mention is Detroit. And I'm from Detroit and screaming Detroit for the past fucking I don't know how long. Mm. And to see when people would be like, uh, Detroit, uh yeah, now nigga, I might be in motherfucking Malibu. You know what I mean? I was in Malibu about a, or not even a month ago, and I'm like, yo, I'm from Detroit. Oh, yeah, Detroit. My friend, such and such, such you know what I mean? Is that conversation now to see? And that's all across the board. Not music, movies, entertainment, tourism, all of that is is people talking about our city and it make me so proud and it make me feel sometimes like, damn, Al, why you not there every day? You know what I mean? Why you not why you not there when the city is fully flourishing when at one point you was like a superman to the city? Why you not there doing that? And then I had to realize that mm. um, you know, I had to realize that I had to become a vessel. Yeah, I had to realize that that um I had to become a vessel, and then I also had to realize that my ambitions was more than just winning right here in the city. At first, that's what I wanted, because that's what everybody wants. Even the people that blow up, they want to be known when they walk in the party stone seven mile. Motherfucker, be like, yo. That's you. And you know what's crazy about me is I'm not here every day. I've been gone 13 years. Nigga, I can walk anywhere on 7 Mile right now. I can like this. Al Nuke, what's up, baby? This not miss you. Where you been? That is, you know, and it's, it's that everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to have that love is real important to me, and it's real important to every artist that come out this bitch. Believe that. That's, Believe that. That's a conversation that happens a lot, that once we, some, somebody reaches a certain level of success, they kind of disappear from Detroit. Like, they build all their reputation, success, money, fly to Cali, fly to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and, I, and at first, I was kind of confused by it, but now I kind of see that you got to realize that the market in Atlanta and California is so strong that if you're really involved in entertainment, you have to be in there. Yeah. You have to be a part of these networks, man. New York, yeah. Atlanta, uh, even, well, yeah, New, New York, York Atlanta, ATL, LA. Uh, you know, LA, even Houston, Dallas. People don't realize that. I tell people this all the time, man. You can't motherfucking blow up on just seven miles. Nigga, I did that. Once you, once you come to a fucking... A, 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 a certain spot, you got to go past that. And to really bring the city in, we can't blow the city from inside. What blew the city was everybody doing shit from the outskirts, making this bitch blow. You know what I mean? Coming out, trying to push the envelope. We done already did the, nigga, I'm on 7 Mile, I'm about to perform downtown. Nigga, I'm over here, I'm about to do. We done did that shit already. It took Big Sean, he working his hand out in L.A., T. Grizzly right now living in L.A. Days Loaf, she went out there in L.A. She was back and forth. Cash Dow, she back and forth. Detroit, Atlanta. Al Nuke been to Atlanta. Nigga, I was pushing the line early, early on. People like myself helped bringing that shit back because that's what it's all about, leaving the D and coming, bringing the shit back. So when as soon as I got with Zay, within a year, once I built this trust, the first thing I was thinking, bro, you got to start working with Detroit artists, bro. You got to fuck with Detroit artists. Mm. You know what I mean? Vez came down, Atlanta, Peasy came down. Nigga, these niggas came to my house. I ain't even know them. I ain't even know them. Bro, come to my house. You know what I mean? Come to my house. Because they, they said, ask Chanel. Chanel will tell you. These the first coming up. Somebody, I'm getting a call. Anybody that called me, Al, this is a new person, this and that. Hey, they're getting ready to come to Atlanta. I need you to, boom, no problem. Hey, come to my house. This is this what's going on. You know what I mean? This right. what high Atlanta. This who you need to talk to. This who you need to move. And that's all of them. Um, that's how many people can you say that you brought outside to inside? And what examples can you kind of give that you brought from outside of cities that had that level of success where they could 
really impact an artist from Detroit? Say that again. Your questions is I'm high, man. Oh, you're good. You're Be good. more complex, more simple. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, what artists can you give examples of that you helped bring uh-huh. to Detroit to help facilitate and build? Bring to Detroit the yeah. artists, the pro- the producers like Zaytoven, who I helped bring yeah. out to Detroit. Yeah. I helped Zaytoven come to Detroit, right? But more importantly, every artist that came to Atlanta. Okay. I was a facilitator through. Right. Okay. So when Cash Dow came down there, Al Nuke was right there. You can ask her. Mm-hmm. That you love her, right? Yes. That's my sis. Yeah. That's, she'll tell you, I'm big bro. Big bro, what's up? How do I need to move? She'll tell you. Peasy, same thing. Vezo, same thing. Payroll, same thing. Sada, right now, they got a project. Sada just did a, a, a single with Zaytoven Beat. Did you know that? No. Yeah, that was through me and Juan putting that together. Cool. You know what I mean? I mean, the list can go on. Payroll and Zaytoven got a whole album. So when somebody touches down in Atlanta from Detroit, they got to call Al. They don't got to do that. It's a good slogan, call yeah, Al. Yeah, I'm not, not going to. I'm not saying got to. I'm not saying got to. I'm saying, like, it's the it's the smartest decision to call you. Every artist in that time of creating the Detroit movement, yeah. and they had to go out, everybody was calling Al, and everybody to a point still called Al. But, you know, the ones that moved and moving and they good, you know what I mean? Now they good. But yeah. everybody know, because I'm going to help push the line. Like, outside of Zay, that's my entry is Zay. Because all this shit is protocol, kid. You can't go out goofy. You see what I'm saying? So this shit protocol. So you come down there, I'm going to tap you in with this nigga. What you working with? What this nigga charge? Okay, you charge 10000 say, well, this my family, bro. And I might not even know you like that, but you from Detroit, but this my family. You charge 10 say, hey, Zay, I normally make some money off that. I don't want to make nothing. I need you to charge him 2000 You know what I mean? I need you to do that, bro. I mean, I mean you can argue about this. I don't, And I don't even got to know you, nigga. You see what I'm saying? That's how passionate I am about this shit. And yeah. Zaya tell you. Yeah, I was. Uh, I know. So, this, I know this is a little bit different, but it's a similar perspective. Ice War Vezel was just on here, and he said that when people started stealing the Detroit sound and style, mm-hmm. it wasn't up to him to speak on it. It was up to the people around him to speak on it. And that kind of speaks about how Detroit artists need to look out for one another and speak for one another, and to make sure you're looking out because. You're all for the same mission of helping build the infrastructure in the city, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's what you're doing when somebody comes over there and needs the connections and stuff like that. It's like, my cut aside, let's figure out how we can make it work yeah. for you. Even with the podcasters and all the podcasters out there, even Dogface. You mentioned Dogface. Yeah. T- Dogface will tell you. Dogface first came to Atlanta. Come on, man. No. Come hang out with us, bro. Learn these people. Know these people. This people, this people, this people, this people. You Since you're so around the city, uh, the sound so much of all these sounds that are happening in the music industry, do you really believe that Detroit sound is being bitten right now, or the style is being <laughs> taken? Uh, I think not really, but I think it's good. Please bite it. You know what I mean? We need a sound out here for a long time. I was dealing with the sound when they said the sound wasn't shit. You know what I mean? So for our sound to be getting taken over, hell yeah, we need that. Why would why why we want to keep it? Why 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 we want to harvest it right here? What the fuck? Atlanta got a sound. Everybody trying to sound like Atlanta. Everybody came up with this auto tune silly shit. You know what I mean? So <laughs> why 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 wouldn't we want our sound to get duplicated? Go uh-huh. and steal it, man. And truth be told, our sound is similar. We our twins is who? Do you know? Milwaukee? Nah, hell no. Chicago? Thank you. He got he got a little sauce. Where? And you close. You ain't really close. You. you, right. you Thank you, sir. Oh, the okay. Bay. The Bay in Detroit is the same music, same family, same cousins. So no, we, it ain't really sector. our sound 110%. The Bay, we got to get a Bay 40%. Probably 50% of the motherfuckers sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just being one. Well, look at the origination. Like, when we talk about hip-hop, we, we, you know, you're coming from New York anyway, so it's not mm-hmm. really like... You're not really talking about something that was totally derived from the city. Everybody took samples from these cities outside LA and New York and shit like that. So Facts. everybody stemmed from something at the end of the day. Yeah, it all stemmed back. That's all coming back. You For know sure. What I mean? It's all blowing What's up. What's been on your mind lately, man? What do you wake up to thinking about? Mm, that's a great question. Um, staying consistent, you know. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my late 40s. I just had a son. Damn. You know what I mean? Um, and it's exciting for me because it bring me back. It bring me back to the basics because my, my girl's younger than me and she want to she wanna work. She ain't got to work, but she want to work. She want to go out and do stuff. So I find myself with my son Monday through Friday in the morning and it's be like, damn, I was doing this 
so long ago, you know what I mean? And maybe I needed that right now because I've been so competitive for so many years. Like, again, you're talking to a nigga that's been on the computer, working, phone calls, emails, negotiating, contracting, getting to it 16 hours a day since nigga late 90s. Man. Every day. Every fucking day. Any and everybody that knows me, Al Nuke personally, to say, yeah, that nigga was somewhere working. Ask him. No cap to this. Never no days off. So at this point, I look at it like, bro, what's really success at this point? You know what I mean? Like, even if you ain't rich, stupid rich, Al, you ain't, you ain't, le you ain't your house big, your bathtub big. You get up and do whatever you want to do every day. You know what I mean? You can drive what you want to drive. You got some money, bro, and you still relevant to the to what's going on right now. I look at all the people that came around that was around with me right now. Man, I don't see ninety percent of these niggas. You know what I mean? So for me to still get a call from a baby money or get a call from a bezo or get a call from the new talent and be able to talk to them um um, um pretty brea you know yeah. what i mean the, these type like you know to be able to just even talk to them they they want to holler at me they you know that's cool that's cool Matasha, yeah, that's it's cool. hard to stay relevant for this long Fuck it's, yeah. it's hard to stay relevant Come for on, five man. years exactly yeah. And you looking at a nigga that don't use cocaine, don't use pills, never drink no lean. I ain't never did none of that. Mm. I ain't never did no hard drugs, bro. Not once in weed. your life? No, nah, bro. Never. Never. Psychedelics? I just had a mushroom not too long ago, and I'm always going to be transparent. I was hitting the lick on some keys one time, and I opened up a key, and, and the motherfucker hit my nose like on, the, key? Like on the movies. Oh, like a cocaine brick? Yeah, man, you got to know what's going on. But yeah, like... That motherfucker hit my face, bro. It was late night. It was 3 in the morning. I'm trying to pull a move. That motherfucker opened up. I said, God damn. <laughs> I had to get the fuck out of that bitch, though. But yeah. Why the hell were you opening up a brick of cocaine? You had to see if it was motherfucking procaine or was it motherfucking real work. And you you're trying to get this shit at 3 in the morning. You got a pistol out. If a nigga come in the door, you got to shoot the nigga and the nigga know you. So it's really fucked up. You know what I mean? That you that's got to happen. And it's far out. And it, so it's white people land. It's a lot going on, kid. You're right. I come from OD and niggas, man. You ever seen a nigga OD? Never. Have you ever seen a piece of crack, bro? No. That's what I'm saying. I had a friend of mine, bro, nigga 20 years ago, that seen a piece of crack. Me cutting up a motherfucking... Uh, I was cutting up, I think a zip or something. The nigga seen crack and was like, man, I never seen that before. He was like, man, I never seen a piece of crack. Art in the dark with the radio station, bro. The nigga died from cancer, my nigga. Do you know that, bro? No. Nah. He never seen crack. Man, I hugged that nigga, bro. Pause. No, no, no homo, bro. That nigga came on my house, see me cutting. He's like, bro, I never seen no crack before. I said, nigga, damn, you never seen no crack, nigga? Give me a hug, nigga. Because uh. you pure still, nigga. Hopefully a piece of your pure, nigga. Can rub on my black motherfucking heart, nigga, because I want to OD niggas, man. And that nigga died from cancer. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I think about proof, God's rest his soul, my brother, you know what I mean? Nigga died. Big dog. Died. The four niggas that I grew up with, it was a four amigos. Dre, Tana, Fetty Ty, and me. I was the youngest. All them niggas dead, nigga. Wow. You know what I mean? Fuck these niggas, bro. How does that tie into the crack thing? Like what? 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 What happened? How does that tie into crack cocaine? What? No. What happened? Well, I was the just people dying you. and and well, anyways, I feel like if I did crack. Yeah, I mean, crack was real. How you ain't never seen crack, bro? A crack? How you how you interviewing niggas every day, bro? And you ain't never seen crack? Well, people thought I was on crack. But you very intelligent. Do you think I? You're very intelligent. Do you think you, I've ever done drugs? I'm fuck no, nah, man. You did some mushrooms. I think you smoked some weed. You ain't. No, you ain't I've never, never did no anything. pills. I never done heroin. You ain't never did no pills or none of that. No, I did. I you did, did some pills. Vicodin, perks? Xanax, Vicodin. No, well, perks. I'm thinking about some hard pills. Now you did some white people pills, volumes. That's old school shit. I'm talking about perks. Heard... What about pumpkins? The muffle. You ever did a pumpkin? But I heard that Xanax and uh, perks are like the same thing. Nah, man. I didn't see niggas perks, man, walking around slobbing. These new niggas walking around slobbing on a perk with their gun out. It's so weird. With jeans tight, gun out, niggas sleep, slobbing, holding the cup. Did you ever, um, I know this is like a, a question that I shouldn't directly ask, but I, I'm going to ask, did you ever do time? I did a little time. You know what's crazy? I just went to jail, like, uh, about, shit, about six months ago. I went to jail for a day. Boy, I was mad at a motherfucker. What'd you do? And I went, I was in the county, bro. 
I went to Wright Street where Young Thug and them at in Atlanta. I was in that bitch, bro, in Wright Street with the roses and all that shit. I threatened a nigga. I told a nigga, bitch ass nigga, I'll kill you, whole ass nigga, what's up? That's all I said on some Detroit shit. Two days later, bro, police at the door, excuse me, sir, <laughs> coming out. Damn! I'm, right. I'm in cuffs for four hours, treating me like a real fucking slave. Right. That's why I never I never get locked up again. I'm smart now. It's like I ain't playing with these people no more. I was talking to this guy. He was doing an interview from prison, and he said that uh, the difference between people coming in prison in 2012 and and 2023 is that in 2012 they came in like smoked out of their minds with just weed and now when they're coming in he's saying he doesn't know what the fuck they're on anymore he's like they're walking zombies when they come into the prisons he said they is bro i was in the county in atlanta can you imagine being in the county in atlanta that shit is like grand theft auto <laughs> for real because you got the old guy you got the young guy that's talking to himself walking around in circles nigga look like kodak black you know what i mean you got the old head you got just a lot of weird ass people bro you know yeah. what i mean it's just Real weird, and then it's real small. You know, it's like, you know, it's real small, real yeah. small. Um, yeah, there's always a guy that looks like Kodak inside the prison. You know, Kodak went to prison again. Isn't that crazy? They got him on some like drug charges. Isn't that crazy? Like how far that motherfucker keeps getting, and then all of a sudden he gets locked up again. I don't know, man. It's really hard to be an entertainer, bro. It's real hard. You know, mm. that industry is a lot, bro. It's a lot. It's a lot on you. A lot of people see it from the outside, but bro, that industry is so hard on you bro it's like it's a lot of wear and tear it's a lot of mental um you're getting pulled and dragged in so many areas you're traveling a lot bitches trying to fuck money's getting stolen um you can't sleep um it's just a lot of shit like it's a lot of stuff so i can imagine i've seen a lot of niggas crash out a lot what, of niggas what do you think the greatest times and moment for detroit history were if you could give it in a linear scale of the moments that took Detroit's music and entertainment scene to the next level. Man, you got to give it to M. Mm. That's just real shit, bro. You got to give it to M. When M was making I Am, say the way to say I Am, winning them Grammy, screaming this Detroit what shit, man, that was a good time for the D. Ain't, ain't nobody fucking with M when it come to that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Eminem a real fucking unicorn, 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 bro. That motherfucker had worth up a half a billion. That's why I say, bro, you got to, you owe it to the culture you owe it to detroit you owe it because you you owe it because god gave you that gift motherfucker god gave you such a gift bro you have to give it out you have to give that gift yeah he did open That's up some, some some spaghetti restaurants well, fuck a spaghetti man did y'all oh, man i don't want to hear that i ain't trying to diss him bro cut that shit out bro i don't want to i ain't you keep that shit bro i don't give a fuck about no spaghetti bro like what the fuck, man? Oh, again, bro, I'ma stand on business. Open up a building, downtown, multi Eminem. Open up. This your man Al Nuke. I know you're gonna watch this one day, bro. All you gotta do, my nigga, is go <laughs> open up a building in the warehouse downtown. Make it a, a multicultural creating system. You know what I mean? Where people can come, young kids can come and create graphics. They can go and make movies. They can go and actually do videos. They can go and actually record. They can actually do just multitude of things, podcasts, all type of stuff like that in a multicultural building. It happening in Atlanta. It's happening in multi cities right now. You got Spotify. You got Amazon. You got all of these incubator rooms that these people have around the world. Did you know that? You didn't know that? What's you didn't know like Spotify got an incubator room maybe in L.A. You can go to a fucking rock star real situation where it's like multimedia, anything. Red Bull got niggas just crazy ass studio. What is like, Shade 45? Just, Isn't Shade 45 like a thing? Like who that? the fuck knows? This is what I'm saying. Where's Eminem's multicultural building downtown where he can get a sponsor to come in and just put that shit together, bro? Isn't Shade 45 Eminem's thing? Yes. Where's it at? Who know In New York. Oh, so it's not here? Hell no. You thought that shit? That's what I'm saying. You got to read. Bro, Damn. next time I come on here, bro, I expect for you to watch Crush Groove because it's going to change your life. Watch Crush Groove. I need you to watch Crush Groove, okay. right? This is going to give you a different perspective, bro. Okay. Because you're going to understand niggas, okay? Right. Crush Groove. Okay. The Mac. The Mac. Okay? Crush Groove. The Mac. Mm. Tougher than leather. Okay. Tougher than leather, 50-50. But really, New Jack City. You seen New Jack City? Yeah, I've seen New Jack okay, City. Okay, cool. Yeah. So fuck New Jack City. That's all. That's Holly. That's Holly. But you gotta go to the. You gotta go to the. To the Bible, bro. The Mac, Crush Groove. Leave it there. And that's it. It's gonna give you the culture, bro. It's gonna give you to understand the culture. Like, whoa, this shit real. You know what trips me out about when people talk about Detroit culture, and then you go to like the platforms that host Detroit culture topics. It's mm -hmm. like literally strippers. 
drugs. Yeah. What? Sh- who got shot? What beef is happening? Why is that? I don't know. But like, how am I supposed to learn about the culture when like that's what I'm seeing? You know Bro, what I'm saying? Is I gotta, I gotta, again, it's algorithms. It's like I gotta blame you. Facts. I can't, and not you. I'm just saying the, the press, the people. The media. It's like it's the media. It's like Trump says, the media. Man, I just seen some shit, bro. I was on my Facebook the other day, right? And I'm scrolling. The algorithm showed me a Bentley. Then it showed me Mosinite Diamonds. How the fuck you gonna put Mosinite Diamonds by a Bentley? You playing with me, nigga. You really playing with my motherfucking top, bro. You know what Mosinites is? No. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't know what most nights is, bro? What's that? Bro, most of the nights is the new diamonds, the new chains that all these young brothers watching, walking, wearing, that it passed the diamond tester. Yeah. It looks so shiny. It looks good, right? But the shit costs is fake. It's a fake diamond, right? So, and I'm talking about the Cuban pieces, the big ass pieces, all of that shit, bro. All of that shit is fuck around could be most of nights. And you won't know because it's going to pass the diamond tester. But the key is this. The chain that's supposed because them big ass, you got to understand them big ass Cubans, bro, a real Cuban and a real ice piece that's real big that artists wear, bro, that's 70000 Wow. That's $70,000. Now, what you got to ask yourself is, do this nigga look like $70,000? Is, is everything matching up to look like this? If it don't, then it's not, you know it's not. You see this watch? Yeah. This is a 41 Rolex. Anywhere I go, I can go around the world and get between forty, fifty thousand dollars for this watch. Wow. I don't give a fuck if I'm in LA, California, don't matter. Ain't no diamonds on this watch. You know what I mean? But a nigga can go get a big ass most of night chain. You can get a big ass most of night chain, bro. That bitch five G's, six G's. But the real one, sixty thousand. 70,000. Yeah. So you just gotta ask yourself. That's for the bitches too. I encourage the women. This is how you gonna know if this nigga got some money, baby. Ask yourself, this nigga got on some diamond chain. Is he buying some bottles? Does this nigga got some real clothes on? How's he whipping? Where the whip strips, where the whip strips for chips for real? Let me really weigh this nigga up. Cause a nigga that got on 70,000, he gonna look like 70,000. He gonna feel like 70,000. You gonna see 70,000 on this nigga. When you look at me, you know. Hey man, that nigga got a couple of dollars. I don't know what he got, but I know he ain't fucked up. You see what I'm saying? So it'd be a lot of niggas with most of night chains on. Where well, you like, it's something ain't adding up. Okay, all right. That's all I need. You watch porn? I'm trying to cut down. What's your category? Midgets. Mid- for real? Uh, black women, it ain't black. Black's like there sometimes. Depends on, if a black girl hit me up on Instagram, then you, I would get me you, turned you on. Girl? Man. <laughs> <laughs> like girl, black, black girl, black girl of the night. Are oh, you going out, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Your girl ever see why, bust you watching porn? No, no, no. That I'm shit not, is so embarrassing. I'm man. not freaky like that. You got caught watching porn by your woman? Like, no. Nah. She opened the door? Nah, I locked the door if I was if I was. I stopped jacking off a while ago. You ever get caught having sex, man? That's the worst. Yeah, I got caught having sex. I come from an era, bro, where my man Pauls, my man was fucking um, a chick, bro. And his woman kicked in the door that was living in the house. Like, what the fuck is you doing? And that nigga was fucking a girl from the back, and he turned around and said, close the door. Ooh. Close the motherfucking door. She closed the door. And that was his woman that closed the door. It's the, the, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I come from that era. So, yeah, yeah that nigga's back, niggas back in the days dragged that bitch. Bitch, you catch me so what? You gonna get beat? You gonna get your ass beat catching me? Man, that's fucked up. Nowadays, 2023, you put your hand on these girl bros over with, man. You going to jail, nigga. Like, it's, it's you, hey, these r- women run this shit, bro. You can't touch women right now. Yeah. Well, you're hey, not supposed right. to you're be. You're supposed able to touch to. your kids. You're supposed to touch. Yeah. But you got to think, though, like, man, man, if a bitch smack you, what you going to do? Run away. I'm going to run, too. Yeah. But the old me wouldn't run. I'll smack a bitch back. I, I mean, it was times where I put my pistol to a bitch head, like, bitch, tell me what's going on. Shot in the wall. Put the pistol back to the bitch head. Bitch, tell me what's going on. Bitch wouldn't tell. Wow. Yeah, this was really when I was in the streets, bro. I could have went to jail for that shit. I, all of this shit, I could talk about this shit because this shit is too old. Ain't everybody dead? But I didn't tie it up, my bitch and my gra- and her grandma. Real talk, wow. right there on Eight Mile and Dequinder. I come over there. You know what I mean? I'm talking to you, bitch. I look in the garbage can. It's a rubber. Oh, bitch, for real? Somebody been over here? <laughs> Strap out. Everybody, hold on. It's just her and her grandma. Grandma tied up. Please don't. Uh... I had to pace the flow for an hour, bro, just thinking what I was going to do. 
thank God I didn't do nothing or thank God they didn't call the police because I'll still be in jail right now. Whose like, condom do you think it was? I mean, my bitch was probably fucking. She was fucking. You think it was like a friend or like one of your Man, friends? Man, it was her and her grandma there, bro. I came through. I just popped up. Babe, what's going on? Because I'm trapping. I just young nigga. I just pull up. Hey, what's going on? I'm in her room. It's just her and her grandma. I live there. A rubber in the a rubber in the fucking thing, oh, man. Sick. I'm pulling the strap. I pull the strap right. Everybody freeze. Everybody freeze like in the police. And she didn't admit to it when you shot the gun. No, that was the other time when I shot the gun. Oh, okay, okay. This was another time where I found my other bitch who was a rubber in her trash, and yeah, and then that, yeah, well, her grandma got tired. Of. Gun, man, I'm I am genuinely scared of guns, bro. Like that's something that I can't ever even think. Why? People try to tell me to carry guns or carry a gun, and I'm like, I can't. No, that's good, bro. Don't carry no gun. Just don't wear no jewelry. Don't wear nothing. Like I've been carrying a gun, bro, for thirty years. Like real talk, I've been carrying a gun everywhere, mm. every day for this. Like my wallet, I ain't, I'm not um I'm not um I'm not trying to be the toughest dude. I'm not trying to show you my gun. I ain't trying to intimidate nobody. It's it's my gun. It's like my wallet, and I will shoot that motherfucker. You know well, what I mean? Self control has to be at an all time high. Uh, my self control is serious. I'm grown yeah. because I I'm like this. We not gonna get to a certain level. See what you gotta do is triple OG game. If you pumping gas, right? Somebody come over there. Hey kid, hey man, hey man, so, so. hey you gotta say, hey man, cool playing, cool playing, bro, cool playing. Ain't no playing right now. Ain't no playing right now, bro. So all of that extra talking, what you trying to, hey man, ain't no playing. Hey bro, I said ain't no playing right now. Now anything after that, gunfire. Wow. Hair pin trigger, nigga. I'm not playing with you, bro. Cause I done told you ain't no playing. Do you ever see that video of Hellova so, getting out of a gas station? And these guys try to steal his, uh, try to rob him for his car, and he Ooh. drops his. There's a video of security footage of Helva. He walks outside of a gas station, and he's holding a bag. Two guys are start approaching him, and he already knows what's gonna happen. So he drops his bag and pulls out his gun instantly, and tells him like, "Back the fuck up." Uh -huh. Gets in his car and fucking. Dips. I can believe that. That's hell. I mean, hell yeah, OG. You know what the fuck going on? You can't yeah. play with a nigga out here, man. Like it's you... crazy how you have to live like. It. Have bro, you ever, can like... you imagine that? That's a lot of stress, bro. That's extra stress on your head to live like that, bro. Yeah, I've had a gun pointed at me one time, and I remember for like the next ten days, I was like, oh my god, I got to get body armor and a fucking gun. Like that's how my mind went. Like you've been, you have, you had a gun pointed at you before? Bro, I had a nigga walk me in the house. Um... I think that was the only time. That was the time where I really thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. I was coming, opening the key of my door, like in Detroit Dreams. I, a lot of times, a lot of things in my movies be real talk of what happened to me. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, a nigga walked me into my motherfucking house with the gun. And, like, nigga walk in. As soon as I walked in, he pushed me on the fucking bed, put a big-ass desert eagle to my fucking head, and my baby mama walked in. And you know what was so good about this shit, bro? He was screaming with the gun in my head, and you could tell a nigga want to shoot. You always know a nigga shoot when his lips shaking when he talks. <laughs> That's when you know a nigga about to do some shit. Yeah. Always watch for the nigga lip shake, okay? But the nigga was shaking his lip with the gun on my motherfucking head, bro. And my baby mama walked in, and kid, what I tell you is, she walked in silent. She walked in like this. Wow. Like, nigga, you got to kill me, too. If she had walked in there scream, ah, pow, I'm dead. He gonna pull up to her, boom, dead, because he was that upset, he was that angry. But um, she just came in silent, like, I know this nigga's stupid. Don't kill this nigga, please. But without saying it, just her face saying that. You know she what I mean? Saved your life. Saved my life, and she dead right now. Damn, son. Sorry, you know that's terrible. Yeah, it's my she baby was, mama. She was a rider. Whew. Man. These is only small stories, bro. Mm. Like, these are small stories, bro. You know what I mean? I've been in high-speed chases, bro, where the car's flipping over type shit. You know what I mean? Like, like police chasing real. Yes, police chasing. You know what I mean? But you've only been to jail once. Bro, it's shit been real. I know. You talking about how I did time. Oh. Not have I been to jail. <laughs> so high speed chase doesn't equivalent difference. to like long like long term time. I have attorneys and shit, bro. Like I literally was in a high speed chase. I I I've been in multiple high speed chases, bro. Why are you running from the cops? Cause I had a tough murder case. Oh, because of an attempted murder case? Yeah, I had a attempted murder case. I ain't one I was on the run for about almost a year. So it was like, you know, I was tired too. You ever been bro, that's what I'm saying. I need you one time to feel this type of pain, my nigga. You're right. Feel a pain. I went to jail where, before. No, nah, bro, I'm talking about where you on the run for a real, like you got caught with some fit, no, nah, bro, 100 grams of fit. Yeah, you yeah. got caught with that. You got to go back to court. Can you imagine that emotion, bro? And you know these motherfuckers talking about like 10 years, you didn't got caught 100 grams of fit. 
KDL, they got you on the motherfucking thing. KDL, 100 grams of fit. He was caught with. <laughs> Man, <fart. laughs> you got any bullshit, bro. But let me ask you this. That's when you, that's when you know you're part of the let culture. Let me ask you this, right? So let's say you're on a high-speed chase knowing that you got a bunch of fentanyl in the car, whatever you have, or you, yeah. have, a, you have a murder charge on your case. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you're on the run forever. Yeah. Isn't there a point where you have to be like, all right, there's no point in running because I can't live in America yeah. and just keep walking around? Like, True. So, so they're chasing At you. that point, you're ready to kill yourself. Fuck. You're ready to kill yourself, fam, because you're tired of running. When you when you when you running on a real drug charge or you running on a real murder or an attempt murder or some shit where you know you're looking at 10, 20 life, man, it's tiresome because everybody turn their back on you and it costs money to go on the run. It costs money to go to war. It costs money to be on the run. So when you ain't got no money, you really fucked up. You sleeping on couches, people treating you like you ain't shit. If you got money, you can't use credit cards, cash, this, that, and the other, and you always got that thing on you. You know what I mean? Bro, I still, bro, I'm down there 50 years old, no cap, bro, and I still got a gun next to me, bro, at nighttime. What? Why? I ain't even in the street. I'm not in the fucking streets, bro. My daughters and them had to literally five, six years ago say, Dad, stop sleeping in the bed with a gun. Like, why is the gun in the bed? I don't know. I stopped selling dope motherfucking 20 years ago. I got fucked up. Is it like a Tupac situation where you got to look behind even though everything's in the past? Like, you still got to look over your shoulder? Bro, you got to ride home every day. If a car behind you, keep straight. Man. What? And I live like that. Um, I, and ain't I mean, nobody looking for me, and I don't owe no tickets. Only because you said things are open, an open book and whatnot, you know, or else I wouldn't just directly go at it. But what was the attempted murder charge for? Like, what what, what were they trying to say you did? Like, specifically? Nah, it's cool. I beat the case. I shot a nigga broad daylight. He was, he, And then it was crazy part about it was it was like a family member, you know what I mean? Nah. It was somebody I grew up with. They stole my rims, and... um. Yeah. He stole me. He just got out of jail. He's like 320 pounds. He just got out of jail on some real Debo shit. And he tried to Debo me because he thought I was the young nigga that was still the foster child that was, um, you know, Lil Bucky. I wasn't Lil Bucky no more. I was Big Buck and I'm putting the whole hood on. And I got old schools and I got all type of shit. So when you pull the move to get your, to try to steal my shit or stole my shit and I found out and I checked you. You know, you you looking at me like, so what you going to do about it? And I'm like, bro, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And you punch me. So I pull out my gun and I shoot you and I unload the fucking clip. And it's 3 <sighs> o'clock in the afternoon and, and everybody outside is summertime. So, and I jumped in my car with my mouth bloody, skiing and sped off. And you know the real talk was? I was mad that that nigga put his motherfucking hands on me, bro. Mm. I ain't give a fuck if he was dead. And then, on real talk. I was mad to how dare you, nigga, put your motherfucking hands on me, nigga. And especially because... And I still feel like that. The honorary, like, in front of people, and you're punked out if you don't do something. Fuck in front of people. Mm. You put your hands on me, bro. There's not the same little nigga that you thought that was there. You see what I'm saying? That wasn't him. This, this nigga, nah. What you might have seen when he went to jail, I was a foster child that was hanging out with guys older than me on the block, trying to have a drink with them, this, that, and the other, you know, trying to hang out. I'm 15. These niggas is 18. He got out of jail. I'm 22. Uh, I'm putting the whole hood on. So in Everybody like, selling my dope. You're not about to just punch me, dog. If it was like a uh, second ending to Friday, it's Ice Cube unloading the clip on Debo, basically. And you know what's crazy, bro? It was a 38. I shot this. I unloaded that bitch. As soon as I got the last shot off, that nigga grabbed the gun. Uh. Pushed me on the ground because he was 300 pounds and stood over me and, tr and hit that bitch, but it was empty. He had got shot all up in here. He didn't uh. give a fuck. Damn, he's tried to take you out. Yeah. That nigga tried to take yeah. me out, bro. I wouldn't even be here. Um, now if I did not load. Run running from the cops, it's a day-to-day -day process. Like, you have to figure out what you're going to do day one, or did you get locked up immediately? Nah, nigga, I was on the run. So just day one, it's like, I got to go. Bro, I skirted off from there, face big as hell, blood everywhere, blood all in my truck. I got away, and I decided, I, you know, I hid out, you know. But um, I was on the run for a year, yeah. What was the hardest part about the run? tired man like i was real tired i remember one time i went and um because you know be fucking money up too so i was getting real money at that time Damn. and i think i fell down to like five thousand or some shit and I, I needed some money and it was somebody that i used to buy some dope from at some time the car wash dude 
and I went up there to buy the dope, and um, he was an OG, right? And let me show you how God worked. I went in the car wash to buy the dope, and right when I walk in there, the nigga I shot is in the fucking car wash. I'm like, God damn, we beefing every day. We're trying to kill each other every day. We're in the hood. The hood's small as fuck. I'm my dumb ass walking this, and I ain't got no pistol because I'm going to see the OG. I'm going to buy 100 grams or some shit. I don't know what the fuck. And I seen the nigga that I shot. He didn't see me because I walked so motherfucking quick outside, and I be damned when I walk outside, his brother is there who's more angry than him. Gun out. He about to shoot the shit out of me. He said, thank I bitch, you gone. And I knew I was gone. Oh, my God. The OG came and covered my body and said, hey, man, you ain't about to do that up here. Not to this young nigga up here. And he literally did one of these. I'm in back of him, and he had to walk me to the fucking car. Let me get in the car. While the nigga got the gun pointed, like, move, motherfucker, move. Get the fuck out the way, move. It's broad daylight. The brother don't even know. What's going on outside? If he had knew, everybody did. But when that happened, I was tired. I was tired. I'm like, bro, I can go in at this point. So when I got in the high speed chase, I was doing 100 from six mile and 75 to like, um, damn near like Coney mile, running through the red lights, everything. I tried to turn and crash doing 100. I really tried to go out. I ain't give a fuck no more. Uh -huh. Car the flip. But the the. The moment of knowing you might take your own life, is that something you can ever compare to another experience in your life that you could even think to do that? Because, like, it's such a, it's the end. Like, and you're not even thinking about the fact that it's the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's a great question because I know, I, I'm, feel, I'm sure I had a couple more of those, mm. but I know for a fact that that was one where I just closed my eyes and said, I'm done. And because I turned, mm. making a hard turn, doing 80. Flipping over. In a fucking Explorer truck. Mm -hmm. When I tell you the motherfucker flip, the bitch flipped six times. Down six miles. The bitch just flip, 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 flip. And nigga, when I looked up, all the windows was busted and the police is surrounded, got the bitch surrounded. I'm like, damn, I'm living? How? And, you know, wow. that's when I got apprehended for the, for the attempt murder. You know, what, the one thing that's crazy that I didn't even realize when you were telling this whole story is that the guy survived. I thought when you unloaded on him, it was over. Nah, that yeah. motherfucker, he's 320 pounds, man. And you know what's crazy is my niggas, that's, that's my niece. So how do I explain this, bro? It's like my um, some guys I grew up with that was a little older than me, they end up having a, he ended up having a, 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 a daughter with my sister who died. You know what I mean? So he had a daughter with my sister. So his brother was the car thief that was actually stealing. You know what I mean? So I got into it with him and his brother. You know what I mean? And they was trying to look at me as the same little young nigga in the streets. And they was kind of older bullies. They was like bullies in the neighborhood. You know, we used to we used to walk up the street, pour Hennessy, you know, put a lighter on Hennessy and drink it while it's on fire and just go and start beating the fuck out of innocent people. Oh my God. So I felt like it was karma because now the leaders of this shit, I had to beef with them as I got older. I had to get in the shootouts with them. But yeah, so I was into it with these guys and my niece is involved in this. You see what I'm saying? Because he had a daughter with her. So, you know, it's always weird, bro. Like, I remember they tried to kill us, bro. Like, downtown, he shot up my truck 15 times. I was riding with people. And, um,. The people I was riding with wanted to go back and do something to them that night, switch cheese the whole house. But my niece was in the house. Can you imagine that type of feeling, Because you related to kid? the person that you're trying to come back at. Uh, Can you imagine that, man? Nah. That's like, bro, I'm beefing me and you riding, bro, and some guys you shooting with, bro, and they try to kill you, bro. But the guys are trying to kill you <coughs> got your niece because he made your niece. You know what I mean? Y'all all grew up together. The conflict but is... But now I'm in the car telling you, kid, fuck that. We got to go kill this mother. We just want to switch cheese the whole motherfucking house, bro. What's up? What's up, bro? Mm. What's up? What you going to say? Nah. Can you going to green light me to go shoot this motherfucking house up? Or are you going to feel like, oh, my, my niece there don't do it because your niece there. But you right. know this nigga just tried to kill us, bro. Right. What you going to do? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. The call need to be made right now, nigga, because our truck just shot up. Oh, what you going to do, bro? What's the play?
No way. What's the play? There's no way. No way what? I wouldn't. You can't. What you mean? You got to understand, bro. If you don't let me go shoot this house up, I work for you, bro. I ain't going to pay your money no more. Mm. I'm going to find a way to not pay you no more. And you're going to fuck around and end up taking a loss eventually because I'm a fucking shark, bro. I want your fucking position. Yeah. Understand that. You're showing me weakness. Well, it's like the Scarface scene, right? Where Scar, it's where, real. Where, uh, Al Pacino was basically Tony Montana's driving and he's supposed to blow up a car with a guy inside of it. And the guy's daughter gets inside of the car and then he has to make a decision to blow up the car or not. The guy he's sitting with to make yeah, the decision. Yeah, same shit, bro. Yeah, but like, unfortunately, I was in the car with three niggas, so I can't shoot them all. You know what like, I mean? <laughs> and then he's my niggas, bro. <laughs> he's my niggas, bro. And and they just tried to kill us, bro. Like, they just literally tried to kill us. These are the type of shit that black people go through. You know what I had to realize, bro? And, I, and make sure you play this for young brothers, bro. The shit that we go through every day, my nigga, that's everyday life, that shit don't sound good in court, bro. The shit I just story I just told you, bro. Yeah, yeah. When they talk about when them white folks mention that, and then he shot in the house yeah. fifteen times with that. The shit sound like you supposed to get 200, 300 months. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But for me, it was just a night on the town, nigga. Some shit went down. So we got to be mindful as black people how we control our anger. Going to make sure you're dealing with better help. I encourage people to go to betterhelp.com, get therapy. I just recently got therapy for the first time in my life. Wow. You ever got therapy? Yeah. Yeah, man, therapy is real. White people been on therapy. Niggas feel like they don't supposed to get it, but therapy is real, bro, because every black person has um, trauma, bro. So really and truly, if it was up to me, reparations would be, nigga, to get your money, you got to go through some motherfucking therapy. If not, you're going to spend it on Gucci and, and get the money to the to the jewelers. No, I need you to go battle your traumas, bro. Yes, absolutely. Man. My friend Dion Shepard is, uh, works for the mayor's office, and they actually have a lot of uh, events and organizations that orchestrate mental health awareness and um, yeah. to help with therapy and whatnot. So everybody can go check out that, plus the website you just mentioned. Yes, what's the name of that website? I'm going to check that no, out. That's Dion, the, you, go, you go check out Dion Shepard. He's a part of... Okay. Um, just uh, mental health behavior in Detroit. Like they have a whole uh, Mary Sheffield and him okay. help orchestrate events in Detroit for that. That's good. Um, man. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's crazy, crazy fucking story, crazy conflict, internal conflict. A lot of things happening at once. Most people will never 99.99% of the world will never understand that perspective in that moment that you were in at that moment. Yeah. Like they wouldn't even understand that moment. Yeah, and for me, I had to, I had to choose the other way. Right. Yeah. Um, no, out. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, God I damn. fucked you up with that one. Yeah, fucking me up, son. Uh, yeah. Now, to kind of easing up things for a second. Shit. Mm -hmm. God damn. Fuck. <laughs> um, you were saying awareness as far as what you say, what you put out, and what you do because people can put you in jail or people can use what you say against you, and mm -hmm. whatnot. And so people, but also to not put yourself in the situation in the first place, like you said. For sure. To get yourself in those situations in the first place. For have sure. you found peace now or have you found more ease? I know you said you still sleep with the gun next to you, but you, have you found some type of balance as far as the people around you? Have you found ways to reconcile or fix situations? Do you still have people kind of mad or upset with you? Nah, you know, um, the people that I'm talking about during this whole shootout shit, like they, um, we they didn't got older, so you know they're around, and if they if they know, they know. Right. I'm gonna leave it there. They they know, but at the same time, I don't want no trouble. I ain't looking for trouble. Right. I don't owe nobody no money. Ain't nobody looking for me. I don't owe no tickets. I ain't in the beef with nobody. It's just certain consolidated situations. Like I had a situation in Atlanta, you know, that was somewhat, you know, um, you know, that was a little weird, and um. But you know, the you niggas speak know. On it or you... Nah, okay. but the niggas know. Niggas know I ain't playing no motherfucking games, bro. Even when you look I at respect. like now, as far as your own personal interests and whatnot, man, outside of music and entertainment, what do you do to keep yourself balanced, man? How do you like organize your day? I know you said you're working sixteen hours a day for the past forever in music, yeah, but sure. do you do you orchestrate time to just clear yourself up or just do stuff that keeps you busy? I'm recently, um, I recently, I recently take more time. I'm in a new relationship. I got, like I said, I got a son. He get he he get the time from me because truth be told, he the only thing that can really get me off of. Um, I'm immune. I'm immune to working. I'm not immune to dead time. 
I don't know what sitting on the couch all day today looks like. I don't know what um, just a cool day. It My family has to force me to go and do something. And hopefully that change. I'm not saying that's right. You know what I mean? But I ain't, ain't nobody never gave me nothing. I stopped selling dope years ago. And I got to hustle. You know what I mean? I got to hustle to get what I want. I got to hustle to get what I need. And I got big dreams. I got big dreams, big ambitions. Mm. You know what I mean? Huge, huge. Lay, lay down some of our, uh, your projects that you got coming up. Lay down some of these ideas you got, you're talking about um, right now. The most important joint right now is Botch. Um, Botch is a movie I wrote about booty shots. It's wrote about from the doctor's perspective that was doing um, fix a flat and super glue, putting it in girls' asses oh and killing them around the world. Yeah. That was really going on. You know, women blindfolding themselves, going to the hotels and getting these booty shots. Um, it's a real movie. It's passionate to me. This is what I'm doing right now. My life, God has told me to, hey, man, write stories that's impactful for your culture. You know what I mean? You can write a, a music movie. You can write a street shoot 'em up bang, bang movie. But now, Al, let's really compete. Let's really, let's really open up that mind and create movies that's part of our fabric, that's really part of our culture. Create them stories that people ain't talking about. You ain't got to create shock value movies. and shock, Create movies that's going to live a test of time. So Botch is um, is my movie right now that's getting ready to come out. I'm really excited about it. We're doing a premiere here tomorrow. Big shout out to it. It's exclusive, though. It's only for 150 women. I'm catering to the women. Direct core marketing to the women. You know what I mean with this particular film. Very cool, man. And I like that you said that getting a new perspective, something that's not really uh, similar to what is being pushed in Detroit culture right now. Because like I said, if you go to platforms and you see what Detroit culture is, a lot of people would be confused yeah. to even say that the culture is offering anything positive because of what's being promoted, because it's clickbait material, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're just trying to get attention. When yeah. there's so much more that goes to it, yeah. that shows the beauty of it, that shows the um, respect to the level of it and everything yeah. like that. It's, Which it's, I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to, I, yesterday I unfollowed like 600 people. Okay. And I, I, now I'm doing this thing where if I see any, if you post anything or I feel like it's, it's, it's just negative or like whatever, I'm, I'm blocking it. And then I yeah. just started following all the things that I've always wanted to be associated Man, with. that's good, right? Yeah. I started doing that, bro. Like I want to yeah. follow, po why I be skeptic to follow something positive, but I got a bunch of negative on my fucking page, that's bro. That's what I'm saying. I followed it's like stupid. the History Channel. I followed yeah. like rap, like real rap resources, BBC News, like shit yes. that's actually like intellectual Little shit. weird shit. I follow, yeah. could be, I follow, um, Art. I love art. I love the cameras, the way the cameras work, the angles and the directors yeah. and the people in Scotland and Greece and doing weird shit. And I like seeing that. But I'm following goddamn Jiggy Boo, huh. showing a goddamn gun every goddamn five minutes in his fucking video. But I'm trying to keep it real following him. And I only want to follow so many people because you get to following too many people on Instagram, you're looking lame. Yeah. So it's like, damn, man, now I can't follow who I really want to follow because I'm... But I, I changed it up, too, so I get it, bro. You it's all about to. feeding yourself mentally right if, now. If you're looking at your phone two hours a day, even that's too much. But if you are and you're just consumed with bullshit seeing girls' titties on the Internet, oh, over, yeah. over I, I mean, we were doing it for five, six, seven years now. After a time, I'm like, I'm tired of it. Like, yeah, I'm still su subscribing to OnlyFans. Yeah. But I'm tired of just, like, being so, like, I open the app and it's there. Yes, like, it's Sign ass, up to my OnlyFans. Yeah. Sign up to my booty. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm tired yeah. of these hoes, man. I've been drugged these hoes for years, man. I'm so done with these bitches, man. These bitches can have it. If you could go you back in man? time, would you have been bachelor lifestyle or would you have found a relationship that would have been like fruitful as fuck from the beginning to be truthful with you I've always been in relationships you know what i mean but i always had a set of bitches you know what i mean on the side in my relationships um and that's just the women that knew me know that you know what i mean but i've always been a kind of you know i ain't out here because i ain't got time to chase pussy you chase too much pussy you can't get no money and you can't be found dated so i always had a relationship to keep me found dated um you know keep me grounded in a sense are you still doing like the side thing or is nah, that no nah, no nah. my new girl won't won't deal with that that's right the way now. to go she, man um, you're doing it the right way my ass you know in india they, 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 there's a thing where uh, it's a memory internally the more people you sleep with you you internalize their memory so when you're constantly accumulating people's karma and people's memory it can actually have like a psychological and physical effect on you man me and kevin gates was just talking about this shit uh last week we was in la recording his album yeah. and kevin gates honestly bro said that he hasn't nutted in five years wow he's had i'm sorry i don't know you know but we we 
having sex. I mean, we having fucking, you know, conversation about sex and me, Zay, and girls there, and we talking about eating right and healthy and all of this shit because he's in the middle of recording and stop recording and start doing push-ups and shit. Like, it's just in the middle of recording. It's like, bro, this nigga's like, he moved different, you know what I mean? But we're talking, and he's like, bro, he said the same shit. That's why I brought that up because he was like, Nuke, you know, when you fuck girls, you giving them something of you, a piece of you, and they live with you, and it's just all deep and shit. And you know what I mean? Went real deep into that shit. Like, I'm like, damn, bro, you made it seem like you don't supposed to really fuck nobody. And then he was on some shit like, bro, I haven't came, nigga, in five years. I have sex, and I don't, I don't, I don't do it to not. Yeah. I do it to please the woman and have me some pleasure. And I said, nigga, you got some strong shit. Man. How could you f not fuck? He said, I do it for the woman, but I don't, you know. I don't, well, they I don't said that there is that. some type of scientific, of that scientific evidence that semen ret retention does offer, like, some type of physical. That's the word he used. Yeah. But yeah, some retention, sperm yeah. retention shit. And you yeah. can Google it because he say it all the time. I ain't it, trying to say that. He's talking about it. There's he a fucked lot of, me up. There is a lot of data that does prove it for sure. Which is cool. You ever tried I'd that? rather be fucking. Nah, I need to be fucking. Man, I need I, to be fucking. I mean, I you can fuck, but you just can't nut, bro. Like, what? I, the, like, you can fuck, 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 fuck. But as yeah. soon as the nut get ready to come, you got to pull out, pull back. I, when I was, I had, I was hood famous last year for like three weeks. It was crazy. Like, yeah, bitches yeah, yeah. were hitting up my phone. I was like, oh, bet, I'm famous. Bet. This is crazy. Before it all ended, um, basically, I was fucking girls every day, like four girls a day. I five was gonna girls. ask you that. You had black pussy before. It's very important. Yes, of course. All right, cool. It was excellent. Thank now, you. Now I was having like four or five girls a day, and this is no—I'm not just saying this for podcasting. I've said this before. It was like four or five girls a night. It was crazy from like Damn. five you to six. Threesomes? No, no, th only one. But it, the girl that was canceled. Cool. Yeah, it, she canceled that halfway through. But anyway, I was having sex with like four or five girls a day. And then I do remember after I was getting bored with it that I didn't care if I came or not. Like, I'd be fucking a bitch, like, all right, bitch, I didn't come, but I don't give a fuck, just leave. Like, I was on That's that That's a different time. move. Yeah, I, yeah, I probably didn't been there before while yeah. fucking, like, I, you were supposed to, you to try to get two nuts out today. You know what yeah, I mean? Or three yeah. nuts. You done, you done came with your bitch two times. You try to play with a third. You like, ah, oh, fuck it. I can't. I ain't a motherfucker. Yeah, after a while, I was like, we I did that before, but to yeah. not actually just nut, period. I don't even know what that look like. I can't. I love women too much, man. I, man, I. Yeah. What? Fuck That's that. crazy. Uh, like, you gotta enjoy life, bro. Like enjoy like the the like unless you feel super super excellent without it. That's your business. Do your thing. But if you're yeah. like, man, I want to fuck every day, but I'm gonna resist it. What are you doing to yourself? Yeah, like what? But you, why are you doing you're that? You're resisting the nut. That's crazy. Yeah. Like that's the part that's I'm lost. Like how the fuck can you even fuck yeah. and don't nut? Like I can't jack off. Imagine jacking off and you don't nut. That's a, now that's a, that is fucking insane. That's that's like, yeah. you, you jack. But you just said, all right, I'm cool. After you, after you waited an hour to look for your category, hey, and you finally found your category. If right? you, if you're, if you're having trouble sleeping, if Al Nuke is having trouble sleeping, what does Al Nuke do to fall asleep? Um, I listen to uh, what's the name every night? I listen to, truthfully, I listen to um, Ocean and Seashell music every night. That's the only way I go to sleep because I'm always on the road. I'm always in different. Whole random hotels and shit like that. A friend of mine said, "What you got your bat noise to go to sleep, fucking?" And I was like, "Bro, yeah, I need to like, I, I gotta go to sleep with some shit." Like Ocean shit, calm me down real quick. Same song, same song. It's been like that for years. Um, yeah, it's on my phone, and yeah, that's. The oh, it's a way. song by Ocean, or is it the Ocean? It's the Ocean music, oh. you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. like meditative, spiritual shit. Yeah, some yeah, shit. I, I, do, I have a fireplace running, crackling with thunderstorm noises on YouTube. It's pretty nice. That's Maybe. cool. I like that. That's some cool shit. But when I was thirteen, it used to be um, when I my thought process used to be basketball. I used to be before I fell asleep. I used to be like just thinking about doing a layup. I don't know why. I was like what that. The fuck? Yeah, I don't know why. But then when I got older, it was fucking bitches. Like that was it. I was like, all right. Thinking about fucking my aunt and shit. God yeah. damn, I should not have said that. Hold up. There, just... No, that's real, bro. Your <laughs> aunt, yo, that's real. No, let me tell you something. No, let me tell you something. You ever fucked your cousin? Tell the truth. I fucked a cousin. Tell the truth. A second cousin, third cousin, yeah. third string. Okay. Second and third, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And people don't really want to talk about that, but in the 80s, y'all niggas know, 80s and shit, 90s cousins was fucking cousins. It was huge in the black era. You know, your second cousin, you get caught fucking, you broke your virginity with your cousin. It was crazy. And I don't know if it's still going on right now. Second cousin, not, is a second but... cousin considered a problem? I think yeah, was... you shouldn't see. You thinking it's cool. Like, don't, wait, don't wait, think wait, it's wait, cool. Wait, 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 wait. Just to clarify, it verify, cool. it, it was, cool, it was cool, my cool. third cousin. <laughs> I fucked two of my third cousins. That's you said second. 
Because because some people have said it's debatable whether she was my second or third. I didn't, it was crazy because I showed my mom a picture of her. She's like, who you been like hanging out with? And I showed her a picture. She's like, you know that's your cousin. And I'm like, Are you, like what the fuck? And I st- I told the bitch the next day, I was like, you know we're cousins. Like we can't be fucking like this. Yeah. We just I did it for my like cousin. I I I I, I fuck my cousin, but I fuck my cousin. I fuck was third, fourth generation easy. They was from Atlanta. I was in a kid. I was a kid then. They she raped me. I was getting raped as a kid by women, literally. I started having sex with multiple women at fucking 10 years old, and they would grab my belt and go, Ooh, and I'm like, damn, what are you doing? I was I used to stroke and, like, fuck the shit out of them. I wouldn't know what nut was. Like, I like I didn't know what nut was. I was just stroking. They grown ass. They was about 15, 16, uh, using me as a, uh, you know. To get off? Yeah, they you they they didn't have grown guys or something. Like, so you know, there are a lot of people where like courts are finding problems with women, with older women having sex with younger kids. Do you think it's like a problem, or do you think I think it, I, I personally would have enjoyed it if my teacher fucked me? Yeah. Mm. Well, I think is a lot of these women nowadays they think men is nasty mm-hmm. because the way that men look at women and they ain't got no game about themselves. They so thirsty, say so this. So a lot of women think of so they look up for some shit pure. That's why they fucking each other. You see what I'm saying? So you got to come in with some game. You got to come in and make a bitch feel good. Like, you don't want to pull up on a bitch playing uh, 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 fucking little baby real loud, smoking weed with a bitch. You know what I mean? Because the bitch going to think I'm going to jail tonight. Nah. Man, play a little <laughs> play a little Nita Baker, bro, when you pull up. You know what I mean? Go to the house, put a candle on, bro. Like, you will never know the bitch feel comfortable. Yeah. You want to make women feel comfortable. Men don't make women feel comfortable no more. That's why women acting like men now because they feel like they got to be tough. Like they got to, oh, because this nigga might beat my ass. This nigga might get me in a shootout. He might tell on me. The hoes, you know what I mean? The hoes, like they scared. You got to say, bitch, come here. I'm a real boss. Come here. Let me lead you. Come here. Slow yeah, uh, a woman came on the podcast and said exactly like that. She said the reason that women are acting like men is because men aren't making women feel like women anymore. They not, man. Nigga don't even know how to cut the grass no more, man. <laughs> you ask these grown ass men, man, to cut the grass. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a business owner. I cut a check and I sweep the flow. I ain't got no I ain't got no problem with doing either one. What's the uh, oldest woman you've ever had sex with? I hit I hit the 69, 70 range once. For real? No, 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 68, 68, 68. I ain't never hit no bitch older than me, bro. Really? Never. Man, no, I can't say that. Maybe two, three years older than me, but I ain't never hit no bitch you older. Never I was hit, like, a, a MILF MILF? <laughs> no. Oh. I was a seventy year old pussy. Straight, it got a smell to it because no. I, I it had a different smell, it got an old smell, no, like sh- a different, unique smell. It's not, it don't stink, but it's unique. Because I tell it you, I fucked the bitch it that was, was vintage. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I do it because I, fuck, like, I like- fucked the bitch that could have been probably, I ain't gonna lie, bitch was probably about 48, 50, 51, 52. Okay, that probably about older. Bitch. The bitch had a scent, it didn't stink, but it was a vintage scent, like you said, it was yeah. like, okay. It ain't no fresh water or catfish. It no. was a vintage scent. No, like, it was like bookshelves. Yeah, 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 yeah. like, like, yeah, like, yeah. like bookshelf. Dusty basement. You know, yeah, green yeah. alcohol, like yeah, green yeah. alcohol smell or something. Like, bitch, I don't know what is this smell. But she know? could suck a dick, man. Oh, she did this God. like tornado thing. I listen. I've slept with like I counted the other day. I have a list. It's yeah. like forty-two women. She did this tornado thing while she was... I was like, where does this come from? Like, who invented this fucking... Like, the turn shit? That's 70 years of sucking dick. Um, Like, that's cool, man. Like, I got fucking... Like, okay, if somebody's been balling, playing basketball for 70 years, that's legendary. Like, they're good at the game. Look at LeBron. Facts, facts. Well, one thing I want to tell... I want to... I want to elaborate on... Yeah. Is women, when you suck dick, Mm -hmm. immediately brush your teeth. Right. Men, when you eat pussy immediately brush your teeth and wash your face. A lot of people don't do that. That's why you see dick breath. You got a nigga around you like, damn, nigga, you got halitosis? No, you ate her ass last night. You woke up, smoked, rolled you a blunt, and walked out the house and forgot to brush your teeth. You know what I mean? It's very important as soon as you give oral, go brush your teeth. Because if you do it three times straight, you're going to have dick breath, babe. Yeah. No matter what. You suck dick. Three times in a row, you haven't brushed your teeth. You got halitosis, dick breath. If you, if your if your girl cheats on you and you you don't know, like, can you mm-hmm. tell? Yeah, you can tell the scent. You got to know the scent. You got to grab. Yeah, you're right. You're put right. your finger in her ass, like not her ass, but like, like, 
don't rub from the front, rub from the back. And you gotta, you know what I mean? You know, you right. know if you're. But I think the yeah. breath is the number way, one way to know. You can tell like what that smell is. You dealing sure. with a bum bitch if she got dick breath. All my bitches right. is bad. They always been cute. They always been pretty. They never, <clears throat> they never be disrespectful. Suck some dick and don't brush no teeth. I feel it. So um, I is there anything you want to touch on before we close out, man? Um, nah, man, it's been a great interview. Um. I think I touched on. <laughs> excuse me. I think I touched on a lot of what I wanted to touch on. Cool. You know what I mean. I mean, you gotta come back, right? And like, just yeah, keep I'm people a, posted. Um, yeah, I'm gonna come back, man. I love the I love the show. Like, I'm always watching. Uh, I commend you again. One thing I want to reiterate is, um, think about that museum. Encourage other artists to bring you different artifacts to start creating this museum. Um, I would like to be an investor. Cool. I think you need to be an investor so people don't call you a culture vulture. Right. And I think you need to go in business, not only with myself and other people that's positive and that's doing things in the D, but find different ways that you can open up businesses or leverage putting people with people because you are a brand. You don't need any money. So like these people right here, hey man, get with these people right here. Let's open up something. Let's do something. The point is you always got money coming through your hands. So I don't want to hear you broke and you white. So Appreciate we know that. you got money. I wish, but thank know, you for that. We know you got money. <laughs> I appreciate kid. that. Right. Listen, um, thank you for the chain too, man. The shit. I mean, coming from Eminem. It came from Eminem, bro. When I I got his autograph when I was in uh my teacher she said if I behaved, she would give me an autograph from Eminem. She gave it wow. to me. Okay. And then one of my friends stole it from my house. So I feel like this is kind of like a you know, a re giving back to me. Like I got the autograph back with you giving me this. Yeah, and that's He's real, that's a hundred percent. Like I said, no cap. Right there, Seven Mile and Woodward. Eminem gave only five of them out, seven of them out. I can't believe it. Man. And um, that's one of them. And the seven other people, they got one. So you'll hear about it. Once they see this video clip, they're like, I got one LA line. It was at Proof <laughs> Funeral, at Proof um, at, at Proof Gravesite. Cool. So, yeah. Man. Thank yeah. you, man. Al Nuke, uh, pleasure, man. Everybody no always problem. has great things to say about you. I want you to come, keep coming back on here and keep making this, things lively. I appreciate it. Look forward it. to everything you have coming. You got these movies coming out. You're really mm -hmm. bringing the entertainment scene uh, via Atlanta and, uh, and Detroit, uh, making it work. Appreciate yeah. you being a part of this. We're at Parallel Sound Studio. Hilo Visual Shootings Productions. We're out. Peace. Peace. Bye, man.